All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends and let us do some work for this evening. Uh, I hope you guys are watching the previous videos, which because I'm making too many, maybe. And I noticed that you guys are missing the previous one. So please don't forget to watch the one before this one and the one before this one, etc. Today we are going to answer Abdul. And so this Abdul supposedly is trying to be smart, uh, as they say in English, smart ass. This Abdul, he said to me here, <clears throat> his name is Mukhtar. Mukhtar bin Shura. Arabic Bible, Genesis. Filbidi Khalakallahu Samawata wal Ard. And he here he's putting you for, for you the, the equivalent in, in the Latin letters, what is written in Arabic. Fi al bid khalaqa Allah for you as Samawat wa al Ard. Your name, your book name is the deception of Allah. So he's asking me how you call your book name the decision of Allah, but in the Arabic translation for the Bible, it says the word Allah. I mean, when I say a Muslim is a stupid by nature, I'm not insulting. My friend, this is a stupid translation. If the translator he chose to replace the word God, or actually the word Elohim, hmm, with the word Allah, that's his business. The question is, can you find me the word Allah in Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse number 1 in the Hebrew Bible? The answer, no. So you are being stupid. So yes, we say the decision of Allah. Secondly, look like some people, they have a mental issues. Our problem with the God of Islam is not his name. Let us say the Muslim God name change and they, kill, they call him Elohim. I will give you an example. For stupid people like you, Jehovah's Witnesses, they call their God Elohim, and even they call him Jehovah. But yet we believe that they are scam like your prophet. So our problem is not with the name as much as with who is that God. If you buy a donkey and you put in the top of your donkey a logo of Ferrari, your donkey will never become Ferrari. Are you getting the point? So don't be stupid. Same time he is trying to say, like in the Arabic translation, he found mistakes in the translation in the grammar. First of all, this is a translation, you idiot. Uh, what about we find your mistakes in the Quran, which the Muslim, they claim it is by God, made by God. I challenge any Muslim to call me right now so we can laugh together. And here he have a list of what he call a fundamental uh, gender mistake. He says, how you say can, and then you say kalima. Because, Abdul, you claim to know Arabic. If we go right now in the Quran, I mean, I never saw a Muslim. He is really, he knew what he's talking about. I wish this guy he is listening and he will call us. I will open my Skype soon. Okay. I want any Muslim to call me as long as we will talk about the Arabic Quran so we can, uh, 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 you know, we can uh, uh, get them busted. When we say the word can, can have nothing to do with gender. Can, it can be for a group, can be for one, it can be for a singular. It can be, it's about uh, uh, was or it be. So when somebody like you try to say something, you know, at least go study some language before you open your mouth. As you see, the word can have nothing to do with, gen with gender. It is not about male, it's not about female, it is not about anything. In Arabic, when you want to make it, when we want to make it specific, we say cannot. But here, because God is not, or the name of God, or let us say the word God in the Hebrew, is not a female word. And this is a translation. So they have to make it equivalent to the Hebrew translation or the Hebrew word. This is how ignorant you are. This is different language, and this is different 
writing and they are trying because the translation is about matching the meaning not matching the exact language otherwise you would never be able to do so same time just to show you how ignorant this person is here he said if we go down because he keep posting the most advanced Arabic on earth Quranic Arabic called Fusha first of all the Arab the Quran is not Fusha because Fusha mean Fasih and Fasih mean clear your Quran is not Fusha your Quran is Fusha it is the most stupid book and let me get you busted from your book if we go in the Quran you will see the Quran itself who says that this Quran is so clear let us show you the verses for where it says so clear In chapter 6, verse number 97, it says, We made the ayat in great details so the people, so they can learn. If we go, uh, chapter 6, verse number 98, chapter 6, 126, and this is a clear that the one who is talking about Fusha cannot be a person who speaks with a clear language. Because why you are repeating the same thing over and over if it is clear? Secondly, the Quran claim that the Quran is made by pure Arabic. Let us look together. Chapter sixteen, verse one o three. It says, and that and the and the one they are reading is not a pure Arabic but the one we are reading is a pure tongue let us see if this is true or not let me zoom in so we can read better hold on we know indeed that they say it is a man that teach him the tongue of him he they are wickedly point it to its notable form while this is an Arabic pure and clear if the Quran is Arabic and clear how come the word Quran itself is not Arabic and if we count how many words in the Quran are not Arabic we have endless lists starting from Jannah Bustan Tabut Qalam Quran the word Quran itself is not Arabic uh, Injil Jibreel Ismail Ibrahim uh, Ishmael uh, uh, I mean you name it even the word Allah is not Arabic this, this is why when we ask the Muslim what Allah mean they do not know so when a Muslim he speak about a strong Arabic Quran we die laughing because Quran is the most stupid book ever and I will show you example of the stupidity of the author of the Quran example not necessarily وهو الذي أنزل من السماء ماء فأخرجنا به نبات كل شيء. Aren't you the one who says that Kana there's a problem with gender? How نبات كل شيء? Have you ever heard of such a thing? You see, usually I don't speak about Arabic mistakes in the Quran because most of the audience they don't speak Arabic anyway, so there's no point. Let me open my Skype so maybe we can get an Abdul. He have the courage, or maybe the same Abdul who who have a big mouth. Let us see if his mouth will function if he dare to call us. So let me open my Skype to be sure that he got a chance to refute us. You see, we are not the same as the Abdul. It's one way monologue. You sing your song, you debate yourself, and you are the winner. All right, call me and let us see how good you are, and let everybody laugh. And if we want to continue. My Skype is open now. I, I don't want anyone to call me except Muslims, please. No Christian. If you call me and you are Christian, I will hang up on you. All right? All the Quran is a stupid. As an example, from the first verse in the Quran, the first verse, here we go. He 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As long you speak Arabic and you claim that you are an Arab and you know Arabic, you will see that you are a professional donkey and you have nothing to do with the Arabic. Because in Arabic, there's nothing is called Bism. We never heard of it, never happened, never exist. The real Arabic have the word Bism, not Bism, which means we have a letter is missing here. Now, why the Arab they took this, or let's say, sorry, the Muslim, not the Arab. Why the Muslims they took this letter here from this letter? The excuse is that this is will make it easier to pronounce and to sing because, as you see, the Quran is meant to be a rab book, so they will be easier for them to recite it and to sing it. So, as long as you speak about Arabic, how many mistakes in this Arabic we can find? Same time, you know, as you claim that you speak Arabic, that all the word, the 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 valve and the and the and the movement in the top of the letters, those are added to the Quran, and they are added by someone who is not even an Arab, which means in every shadda we have two letters, which means here we have two ra, here we have two la. Here we have two ra. Guys, the one who will send me links in Skype and send me message, I'm going to block you because I'm sick of it. I have more than 800 or maybe a thousand people in Skype, and everybody send me a link, especially when I am talking. If you have something to say, call me. When I say only Muslim call, only Muslim call. When I say you, uh, anyone else can call, call. Otherwise, if you will keep sending me articles of people, uh, and I cannot read them all. I am not a machine. So when you speak about Arabic, and you say the Quran is the most accurate Arabic, that is a very funny, stupid statement to say, to the point. Even the Quran itself says that the Quran, the Quran, imagine the Quran says that this is a clear book. The Quran says this is a clear book. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend. Go ahead. Uh, how are you, Sip? I'm fine. Are you a Muslim? Uh, actually, I'm... Uh, well, like, I used to be a Muslim, but, like, I kind of have doubts about, like, religion in general, like Islam and Christianity. I kind of uh, research, you know, both religions and trying to find out what's the truth, you know? Okay. How so, can I help you? Well, I'm calling to ask, uh, like, about Christianity. Like, I'm kind of, uh, like, I know, like, I know the the basis of Christianity is that, like, Jesus Christ, uh, basically, he came to die for our sins, and like, uh, then he was resurrected, hmm. and uh, basically, we are, uh, like, you're you're saying that we're saved by, we are like, we're saved by his death on the cross, so. Like what I want to understand is like in the Old Testament, uh, God basically it's like there wasn't this idea of salvation. Like like at first the Old Testament, God is basically uh, like you know you're basically supposed to obey God. You're saved by works, and then the whole thing just changes in the in the New Testament. You know we're saved by Jesus Christ. So and like in the Old Testament it says God does not change His mind. So I wanted to uh, yes, know my your friend, opinion. My friend, okay, you have a wrong understanding. First of all. The message about God who will come as a man is in, in the Old Testament. If we go in the, in the Old Testament, we will find in many places where God speak about himself, even in the book of Genesis, right away he say that God created Adam in his image, in his image he created him, which means in the image of God. So God, he present to us that there is an image of a man, which is the image of Adam, and that is the image of God. But who is that God? This is God the Son. Same time, if you go to Genesis 5, you will see that all the names of the children of Adam all the way to Noah, they speak about a, a, a message about the one who will come and his death will bring comfort to mankind. So the message about God who will come and he will die and he will be uh, 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 give himself to us is exist in the book of Genesis number 5 and even in the book of Isaiah. This is why Jesus, when he... Uh, uh, like in many places, when when Jesus was on the cross, uh, he said, Eli, Eli, lima, lima This is a quotation from the Old Testament about what will happen to the Messiah. So if you think that this is a new idea, you are mistaken. Jesus, he said to the Jews, 
what do you say of the of the Christ they said he is the son of David so Jesus he said to them say if he's he is the son of David then how David then called him uh, 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 he said God uh, uh, said to my God sit in my in my right side and then he called him Jehovah so you are mistaken about that this is the new idea and it's not exist in the Old Testament okay uh, also another thing that I'm confused about is like uh, Christians believe that Jesus was 100% God and 100% man hmm. but uh, when I think about it like it kind of uh, doesn't make much sense because like 100% 100% that's 200% so it's like as if like, no it's too no no uh, simply let us let me uh, explain to you uh, like you said, you used to be a Muslim, right? Are you still Muslim or, or not? No, not now. Hello? I don't, I don't, I guess I'm here. I don't really consider myself a Muslim because I used to be a practicing Muslim. Yeah, but, but, you, but you, uh, used to, uh, you used to be a Muslim. So what do you think when the Quran says that the spirit of Allah, which the Muslim claim it was an angel, came to Mary as a perfect man? Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. Something like that. Yeah, and, and before that, before he said that we we are we are sending So we sent to her our our spirit, and it became appear in front of her as a perfect man. So, in this case here, the spirit of Allah became a perfect man. Is it one hundred percent man? Yes. Is it one hundred percent spirit? Yes. How that can be? Now you yourself, you are one hundred percent spirit and one hundred percent man in the same time, because you have a spirit. And you are a man in the same time so if you say it's impossible to be two in the same time you are saying you are impossible to be yourself for every one of us is a spirit and a body this is why when somebody die we say he is a dead body do you agree yeah okay so God the spirit and God the man is one hundred percent the spirit of God is in that man 100% spirit and 100% man so 100% God and 100% man in the same time so the form is a form of a man but what is in this man is God this is why Jesus said every everything I, I do is given to me from my father which mean my father who is the one who sent me to you the man in front of you is he can do nothing of himself what does that mean it's mean it's not the man who is doing this this is God who came to you as a man because people they can't understand how he can claim the authority as an example not only Jesus he resurrect people from death not only he uh, uh, he make miracles but he forgives sin so people they were wondering what is what is your authority to say what you are saying okay uh, so you're saying uh, there's obviously there's also a lot of situations in the in the Bible where where Jesus uh, like for example when when he sees the the fig tree from far and then he comes close to it even though like it was in the season of figs and then he curses so in that situation like so you're saying that was the man part that was talking no like that was no 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 i know what you are trying to say i'm trying to say how come he do not know it is not the season jesus here do he do nothing god he do nothing for no reason jesus is not interested in a fig tree jesus is saying to us and he mentioned that more than once the tree which does not give a fruit is going to be cut off and thrown in hellfire which mean you cannot say I don't have it's not my season yet it's not my time yet I cannot do it now you have to give a fruit the tree who don't provide a fruit is going to be cut off and going to be sent in hellfire this is not about fig and God don't care for fig same as the story about Adam and Eve do you think that God he punished Adam because he ate an apple this is the whole drama is about an apple no this is about God and disobedient to God so either you are a person trying to understand what Jesus is trying to, to say and to do or you are a person trying to be a naive and you read things in simple way Jesus Christ is a very deep person and he is not a person just making words and you will notice that Jesus he cursed the tree and the tree die immediately so here Jesus he knew it's not the season Jesus, he knew that this is not even like why the tree will give the fruit anyway. But because I am your Lord, I, I created you and I'm not going to accept from you any excuse. And look what I can do to the tree. Here we go, a tree who don't have a season yet. But yet this is not an excuse for me because you as a human, you have to give your fruit. Jesus, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them, not from their names. 
so if you are a person who say God God this is why he said not everyone says to me God God will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will which means the one who give his fruits there's a person Abdul he sent me to me a message in face in Facebook he said that Jesus said not everyone says to me God God will enter heaven and he is claiming that this is mean Jesus saying he is not God the fact is the opposite because what he said not everyone says to me God God which mean many who says to me God God will enter heaven and the Muslim they say show me one verse in the Bible saying that Jesus said I'm God not everyone does not mean nobody not everyone is the exception the exception is there is some people who will say to me God God but yet they don't deserve to go to heaven and this is a clear proof that Jesus is saying clearly that he is God and worship me anything else my friend hello uh, well, uh, well, no, like the thing. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, like what I'm saying is that I've seen like a lot of Christians. Like when when someone brings up, like for example, uh, you know, the fig thing, and about Jesus being given authority, and uh, about Jesus saying he does not know when the when the uh, last day will come. So they say when Jesus says these things, it's is the man and him talking. No, and then no, when no, 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 no. You see, first of all, there is nowhere in the Bible it says that God, uh, Jesus, do not know the judgment day. What Jesus said to you not even the son of the man he knew if you go there and you read the rest of the chapter you will see Jesus saying when this happened and 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 then I will come and not only that he said that my father he gave me the power of judgment of all the earth and what is in heaven he is the judge for all everything so Jesus Christ is the one who will accomplish everything what Jesus is saying, because in Christianity we have different idea of what is the judgment day is. Jesus was explaining to you that when those things happen, judgment day would happen, which means when you became so corrupt, the same as what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. If there's only 10 righteous, God will not destroy it, which means the destruction of the city was not because God will destroy it. God is waiting for us to corrupt the city, period. And then the city will be destroyed. So if there is 11 people still there are not corrupt, the city will not destroy it and God will not destroy it. So there is no preset date for God to destroy the city. Who is the one who will set the date of the judgment day is we, how much corrupt we are. And this is the whole idea. The more we corrupt this earth, the more we became evil, the more we became disgusting, the more etc. That is our free will. The faster we do it, the faster the disease is spread, let's say the faster the cancer eat our body, the faster we'll be destroyed, which means it is a self-destruction judgment day. So when you self-destruct yourself, I will come. Okay. Uh, I also have another uh, question um, uh, about the verse where Jesus says that he was given authority uh, over all men, over all flesh. Mm. So, uh, like, obviously, uh, Christian belief is that Jesus uh, is... He was already God, like he existed since, like before the incarnation, he always existed. Hmm. And then he uh, entered into creation hmm. as a perfect man. Hmm. So uh, when he says that he was given <laughs> authority, doesn't that sound wrong because he already had authority? No, and then, like, you see, you are not came... listening. You are not listening. I just said to you that people, they are looking at a man and they are wondering where he got the authority from. When I say to you, your sin is forgiven, shouldn't I ask myself, who is this person? Who is a man? I see a man in front of me. And who is the one who's talking here? That's all. This is why when Jesus, you know, he said to them, uh, the, uh, Abraham, he saw my day. The Jews, they said to him, well, how Abraham, he saw you there and you are not even 50 years old. He said to, the, to them, well, the truth I say to you that he saw my, he witnessed my day. That truly, truly, I say to you, he confirmed to them again that he saw my day and he witnessed me. So when Jesus speak, he tried to explain to you that the man in front of you is not the one who is holding the authority because of the flesh it is God in that man this is why when his apostle they say to him why you don't show us the father and that's it okay show us the father so Jesus said I am with you all this time and you do not know me the one who saw me he saw the father for I am and the father is one how more clear we can make it so even his apostles they are wondering in certain point how he is a man but yet he is a god or he is the god so show us the father and that's it and then he gave them the answer that you are with me all this time but that you do not know me 
the one who saw me he saw the father for I am in the father and the father is me and we are one so my friend here you get the wrong idea and maybe you get the wrong explanation from some Christians who they are you see there's there is people who they, ha they don't have deep thinking and they don't go and dig deeply and don't have a right understanding so let us say there's some Christians maybe Christian by name or Christians uh, would, would uh, not a deep study Okay, but like I, I still don't understand what does Jesus mean when he says he was given authority by the father I just told you I don't know you're not listening. I just told you Jesus no, is listen, speaking. No, 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 you're not listening I just told you that Jesus is telling them that the man in front of you. He is not speaking of himself It's not the man who's speaking. This is God This is why the Bible says that in the beginning It was the word and the word was with God and the word is the God and then the word became a flesh not the flesh became God So we don't believe that the man became God. We believe God became a man so people they see a man and now they are wondering he is man or his his God he's speaking as God but yet he's a man so he's saying to them what do you see what I have the power I have is what is given to me the man he can do nothing of him himself of his own there's no man can 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 resurrect people from death there's no man he can make a blind see there's no man he can, he can heal people just by touching his clothes there's no man can control nature no, there's no man can do that or no man can forgive sin so people they were wondering he is a man, but yet he can do what God does how that can be so he is explaining to them that it is not the man It is God in the man in the front of you who is doing this This is why we believe in the incarnation of God God came to us as a man. It's not a man came to us as God Okay, I think I understand your point so to reiterate you're saying that uh, Jesus as the perfect man he was given authority from God as in like the no God no 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 you see I'm, I'm, I'm running my windshield now I don't know what's wrong with you my friend with my respect to you it's not I mean Jesus as a perfect man was given authority God became a man God yeah, know, became a man listen no listen listen God became a man so when we say Jesus explained it to them that I am the man in the front of you and understand me please the God in the front of you which you see as a man he as a man he can do nothing of himself so we don't worship the flesh of jesus god is not a man we are not worshiping a man we are worshiping god who came to us in the form of a man this is why when a, when a muslim he says to us where was the trinity before jesus was born that is a stupid question because jesus said before abraham i am i am the alpha i am the omega i am the beginning i am the end so his existence he have nothing to do with his birth as a man are you getting my point so if God came to me like you know when when, when Muhammad he claimed that Jibreel came to him as a man is that mean that this is the moment that Jibreel he became a man and before that Jibreel was not exist no Jibreel supposed he was exist when Jibreel he do a miracle let's say he's, he's an angel so when he do something powerful is that the man doing the miracle or the angel which is in that man doing the miracle what do you think uh, the angel and the man that's it so God in that man is doing the miracle but because people they are you know they see something amazing in front of them nobody can explain but yet what they see is in front of them is a man so he's explained to them that I am yes I am a man but God in me is the one doing what he is doing I am the Word of God this is why they keep asking him who are you you say I am you see in the Bible when you say I am you are saying I am God when Moses asked God what I will tell my people who what I will say who are you he said I am this is what you tell my, my the people go and tell them I am who I am as simple as that so Jesus he said I am the light but people they see a man he said I am the resurrection but people they see a man he said I am the beginning I am the end but people they see a man so people they want to understand what he's trying to do and what he's trying to say and he explained himself by parables always this is why you see Jesus always teaching them about what is given to them and what is going to be taken from them what God gave them what God will take from them if they don't do what is right so all the teaching of Jesus is about I am coming to you as a man in a form of a man and I will be I will do everything I can to help you but I will not help you which means I will not do your work at the end of the day I will do my part and if you reach out to me, that's why he said, knock at my, at, at my door and I will open for you. Ask me, call me, and I will answer you. Every two of you mention my name, I will be between them, which means he will be the third, which is impossible for a man to do. 
because there's no way you can be everywhere unless you are a, a super powerful person who can be everywhere in the same time and that cannot be possible for a man a man he cannot be everywhere so everything jesus said proving that he cannot be just a man yes he is a man but he is coming in a form of a man but yet he is god in the same time well that is, that's not really a good explanation but i'm going to research on that later my, uh, Avos, another my friend no Avos. no no hold on when you say this is not a good explanation why explain to me don't hit me because, and say i did not uh, okay because like uh can you read me the verse again where, where like the one where jesus says i've been given authority and like try to explain while you're reading the verse so because i don't really it's remember not in, it's not one place there's all over the bible it says jesus said that everything given to me by my father everything given to me by my father it's not one verse it's tons of verses but that will not change the fact i just told you from the beginning that he is saying to them that makes that more sense not, to understand my friend you are wasting my time you are being stubborn you don't want to listen this is up to you Take care. Mm. I'm not going to waste my time to change my topic just for you. And you still you say to me, I don't understand. Don't understand. And please don't believe in Jesus. And please stay Muslim. This is your salvation. This is your business. We did our part. You don't want to accept this is your business. We told you that Jesus is speaking, that why I am speaking like this. When the Jews they said, Who is this person who give his he's saying forgive sin? How he can forgive sin? He said, which one is easier to do, to say your sin is forgiven or to say to this person, carry your bed and walk? And he told the man, carry your bed and walk. And the man who cannot walk, walk. Words is easy. I can say your sin is forgiven. But nobody can make me walk if I am in disability. So if you want to understand Jesus, then you read everything Jesus said. When Jesus said, everything is given to me, but in the same time saying to you, the one who saw me, he saw the Father, either you are stupid or you decide to be stupid. He just told you, when you see him, you see God. No call from a Christian, please. No call from Christians. I let him speak because he is not a Christian. As simple as that. Have you ever heard of someone there to say the one who saw me he saw God? That's it. The one who saw me he saw God. How I can explain to you more? You see me, you saw God. So what Jesus is saying to them, the man can do nothing. There's no man can do what I can do. For I am God. For no man can be exist before Abraham, for I am just born a few years ago. For I am exist before Abraham. No man can forgive sin, but if, you, if forgiving sin for you is a big problem, it's hard to believe. Well, here we go. I will tell the guy to carry his bed and walk. Which means I will show you who I am by the authority I hold. All right. Stay in Islam, you know, so Allah will give you a long penis. Good for you. And you are a hypocrite, by the way. You deny that you are a Muslim or you try to deny Islam because you are afraid I will ask you questions about Islam. As simple as that. This is what the Muslims, they do. When they call me, they play the game. Suddenly they are Hindus and they are atheists because they are afraid I'm going to ask them about their prophet and his stupidity. We know the game. You are talking to Christian Prince. Let us continue. As you see, the Quran is the most stupid book and it cannot be a good Arabic for a very simple reason. All the Quran is messed up to the point you cannot understand anything. To the point even the author of the Quran said, that this book have a lot of places where nobody understand what it says save Allah. So when you say to me that this is a clear Arabic, the Quran is made in a perfect Arabic, it's perfect to the point nobody understand it. You see how perfect it is? That means this book is literally stupid. If I write a book and nobody can understand what I am saying, that means my book is a stupid book. Hello? Hello? Yes. 
Uh, hi, CP. Hey, my friend. How are you? Great. I was actually just talking recently. Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna like ask you like different questions. Like I'll, I'll accept your explanation about the. Let me ask like, you. What do you think oh. about Muhammad, my friend? Um, I think that he is a terrible human being. Well, what like, does that mean? What does that mean? Well, he did like. Like he married Aisha when she was six years old and consummated marriage when so she was what? nine. So what? The, the Muslim, they say that at that time it was okay to marry children. So what? That that doesn't like justify it because uh, hmm. like we should have, there's like some things that are that are wrong no matter what time it is. Okay. Like, is, like, is, that, is that the only problem you have with Muhammad? Well, no, not really. There's like a lot of other stuff like. Uh, I lost you. Uh, like who came complaining to him that her, her husband beats her yeah so Hello? like beating women etc okay my friend listen my explanation about about Jesus nobody can explain to you what Jesus is about unless you decide to study Jesus yourself and you read with dignity not only you are a person who is in suspicion because simply what Christianity teaching you that God is called Almighty you know what Almighty mean yeah. What Almighty mean? Almighty means is powerful. He can do anything. Anything. That's that. it. So the second I say he can do anything, it's mean he can be a man too, if he wish to be. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So what you are trying to say that because Jesus said I've been given authority, then how he can be God in the same time he's given authority, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if you are coming to a human being and you want to introduce yourself as a man, people they will say you are crazy. Don't you agree? Yeah. Okay. So he is trying to explain to them in the way they understand, in the level of their mind, in their brain, in their ability, why I am your God. Because they see a man in front of them. You see, in the Old Testament, it says it clearly that nobody can see God and live, as simple as that. Moses, Moses, he cannot see God. So God came to us, and now we can see him. A human being, he have an excuse. Okay, I never saw God. Where is God? Atheist, they can keep saying that to us okay if, if the God is true let me let me see this God so God came to you but still now because he came as a man that is a problem for you because you your eyes see a man but in the same time there's something you don't understand this man he can do things nobody can do so he is trying to sell to say to them that the man in front of you can do nothing of his own but I am sent to you by the father father the father god on me or in me is the one who is talking to you and he is doing his work so the man the the, the normal human being he cannot do that so jesus is not you see when we when we say jesus the christ we're talking about jesus the man and christ is the word of god the word of god came to us as a man we see a man but the man he proved that he is not not just a man he can do what god can do so Jesus, he can resurrect people from there. Jesus, he can tell you what you hide in your houses, what you can eat, what you what you did, you, you, the unseen. He can he can resurrect people from death. He can uh, uh, heal the lepers. He can heal the blind. He can do what things nobody can do. That is not a man work. That is a God work. So how man can do God work? Jesus explained. If Jesus he just said that. I did a miracle to you, which is made by God. That will make it very clear that that's it. Jesus saying that I am just a man who God gave me a power, a, a miracle, a sign from him, and that's it. But Jesus did not say that. Jesus, he said, tons of things that anything he, you know, like even he gave his, the authority of his, of his apostle, whatever you, whatever you count down on earth is going to be counted in heaven. So he is a person who give authority even to those who follow him. Jesus, he forgives sin. A human being cannot forgive sin. Nobody have authority to forgive sin. Not a single person in Christianity can forgive sin. Priest, even the Pope of the Catholic, he have to pray asking for forgiveness for his sin. So everybody in Christianity is under the sin and he is a sinner except Jesus. He is the only one who can forgive sin for his God. So in order to understand who is he, then we have to understand his authority because authority cannot be given to a man to forgive sin. I can understand that God, he gave a prophet uh, a miracle. But this is the miracle of God, not the miracle of the prophet. 
it's God who did that not the prophet but you will see that Jesus he do it in his name even people they do miracles in his name the whole Bible speak about miracles in the name of Jesus by the name of Jesus I order you to walk by the name of Jesus and there's many people they were able and the apostle the, the, the disciple of Jesus they were able to accomplish a lot of miracles in his name even the Quran speak about it when the Quran speak about the three messengers which sent by Isa and they sent to the city of Antioch and they were able to do amazing miracles nobody can do so if Jesus is just a man he cannot give me an authority to do miracles in his name if Jesus is just a man, he cannot forgive my sin and your sin and the sin of everybody. If Jesus is a man, he cannot be the salvation because the salvation has to be by God, not by a man. A man is a man like everybody. Every man is a sinner at the end of the day. Even the Bible says that God is not a man who lies, which means every every man he lies. Right. Uh, Save God. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I also I'm also curious about like well I know that the Gospel of John is uh, one of the Gospels that explicitly states that Jesus is as God, and the Gospel of Mark uh, Jesus is depicted more as a Messiah and uh, as a Son of Man, I think, uh, and I, I don't know I, I I'm not sure about the other Gospels, but I think they kind of have uh, like mentions as if like they're implying that jesus is god but it doesn't actually specifically say it as much as the gospel of john does so i want to know how do we know that jesus is god like do all the gospels have that same message like explicitly my, like, my friend clearly? my friend no this is this is this is a big fat lie many people they say that only in the bible of john it says clearly that jesus is god we can quote english verses from all the gospel but if you are a person just trying to say and to copy and paste what people they say this is your business you can go right now and search in google i'm not going to do your homework search in google jesus is god uh, 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 the book of luke jesus is god in the book of mark jesus is god in the book of john jesus is god in even in the revelation in the book of act so like i mean you search you will find it all over so this is a big fat lie when they say that only in the book of John, Jesus, he said, I am God. That is a big fat lie. And I just showed you even from the Old Testament. So, yeah, I know. I, know. I actually agree with you. Like a lot of these verses can be interpreted as uh, like Jesus is God, but like it, like it requires interpretation from us. It's not really clear. You know, it's not like explicit as the gospel of John, which is. No, uh, no, 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 this is this is this is not a true my friend. This is not true There's you know, there is tons of verses if you go to Matthew, you know uh, 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 You will see the book of Matthew even chapter number one verse number 23 It says God what, what is going to be called? What is the name of, of Jesus? Emmanuel God is with us. So, you know, we don't want to uh, like play a game Mostly what people do they copy what other people they say they are not really do search and they are not doing any study it's just somebody say that you find jesus is god in the book of john when every book you know we can go go all over i see a muslim is trying to call me so i want you to excuse me i want to take the muslim because we, this is our topic and if you have a question later you can call me back all right okay all right thank you let us see this muslim who is trying to call look like he's he's there He's a shake with long beard. <laughs> what happened, Abu Sumaya? <clears throat> I could not take his call. I'm calling him back. Let us call him again. He's not answering now. All right.
Call me back, Abu Samia. Okay, say one second. Let us see what Abu Samia. He have two daughters and they are wearing hijab. They are not even five years old. Imagine. Let us go back to the, the topic until this uh, Muslim he called. In chapter 3, verse number 7, the Quran says that there's a huge part of the Quran nobody knows what the Quran does say or mean, save Allah. And those who they are grounded in knowledge, they say we believe, which means if you are a person, the Quran consider you grounded with knowledge is not the one who understands the Quran, is the one who say we believe, not we understand. So when you say to me that Arabic Quran is the most accurate Arabic, that is the most funny, stupid statement ever. Because the Quran itself confirmed that it is not clear Arabic, it is gibberish. And here if we ask you why God want to send Quran, which nobody understand, save Allah. Aren't you getting it that this is very stupid? But I will tell you why. Because Muhammad is a thief. He do not know what he's talking about. It's like stealing from the book of somebody. And then you put it in your book. And then somebody asks you, where you get this information from? What does that mean? Explain to us. You have no idea what to say because you are a thief. So nobody knows what it does mean, save Allah. Save Allah. Well, nice to meet you. A Muslim saying to me, if Jesus as God in Old Testament, then why G Jews not believe in him? This is a lie, my friend. The Jews believe in Jesus. Who is the stupid? He said to you that Jews don't believe in Jesus. Actually, more than 90% of the Jews already they are Christian. What is left is 10% or even less. This is why after 2,000 years of Christ, there is not even 17 million Jews. What happened to the Jews? Isn't it all the disciples of Jesus, they were Jews? This is a big fat lie when people they say the Jews don't believe in Jesus. We as a Christian, me as an Arab, I learned about Jesus from the Jews. So it's a lie when they say the Jews did not believe in Jesus. You are talking about what is left of the Jews. All right. Now, what happened to this uh, Abu uh, Abu Sumayya? Are you going to call me, my friend? Abu Sumayya, are you going to call me? Anyway, uh, <clears throat> when somebody tried, you see, you notice here how amazing the Messiah is. We are debating about Jesus if he is God or not. I mean, do you see how high he is? We are not debating about Jesus if he fit to be a prophet or if he fit to be a great person. We are, we are debating about if Jesus can be God or not. And nobody can question the ethic of Jesus. I mean, that alone is, is, a, is a bigger question. Because there's not even one of us don't have an ethical problem. Do we agree, people? Not even one of us. All of us we commit sin. All of us we lie. All of us. Jesus said, "If you wish to have, if you wish by by your eye a woman, she is not yours. You committed adultery." Which means, even if you are a person who tried to be perfect, you never even slept with the women, you never even touch a woman. But there is no way you never wish something is not yours to be yours. We are not debating about Jesus if he is good or not. And that alone is enough that God is good, so is Jesus. 
for is if Jesus is so good that means he is so God do you understand me people that is my Lord my friend I'm not following Jesus just because he is uh, uh, somebody from death I'm not following Jesus because he have a great speeches or let us say he's a wise person I'm following him because he's an amazing person yes hello yes uh, it's me again all right uh, I feel like am I bothering you by calling too much? I feel like maybe I should just no, let but you... I'm trying to get this guy who tried to call me before you his name Abu Sumayya And I don't know what happened to him. But anyway, if he called I will hang up on you immediately Go ahead. What do you want to say? Okay uh, So I was like I wanted to ask you uh, something else uh, about Jesus uh, Jesus. I think he said uh, a Divorce like a man if a man divorces his wife it is as if he's forcing her to commit adultery and that divorce is only permissible if, uh, uh, like, the wife committed uh, sexual immorality, like if she committed adultery. No, adultery, so, first of all, adultery is not sexual immorality. Continue. I will, I will explain to you. What is your okay, question? Okay, so I was wondering, uh, well, uh, if, like, a couple, like, a guy is abusing his wife, like, mm -hmm. obviously, in that case, it should be permissible to have a divorce. But according to Jesus, it's impermissible. So mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, like no, my weird. Friend. Like no, he was, no, 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 no. You see, the Bible is speak about adultery, but people like you and many, uh, with my respect to you, I'm not trying to put you down. There's many people do not know what the word adultery in the Bible mean. Adultery is any sin you do against God. If you abuse, if you abuse your authority as a husband, you are doing sin against God. The Bible says that the earth commits sin, commit adultery. The earth commit adultery. Have you ever heard of an earth having sex? This is not about sex. Adultery in the Bible is any great sin against God. So if you disobey the orders of God toward your wife, if the wife disobey the order of God toward the husband, that is adultery as an example if I leave the house of my wife and I don't come back that is adultery if my wife she leave my house that is adultery not necessarily she's sleeping with somebody let us say she moved to different apartment and she live in different place and she don't want to come back that is adultery because when you get married you made you take an oath in the front of the Lord that you both became one and one mean that Jesus said that the man he gave himself to his wife as Jesus the Christ he gave himself to the church so you bring a woman to your house and you start beating the hell of her that's mean you are committing adultery and you are a bad person and you are no Christian okay that makes sense okay uh, I also wanted to ask you like uh, you obviously like you you agree that Muhammad did a lot of bad things right like uh the whole sex slaves thing and marrying aisha and condoning beating wives mm. and uh, uh what's it called the banu Quraiza sl uh, slaughter mm. those are all bad things uh but like the like you can't deny that there are also things in the old testament that might seem violent like when yahweh says uh commands i think king solomon or something to uh kill the malachites and like kill their children and the women and the donkeys and the cattle and the camels and you know stuff like that like when you read it you feel like that's a bit wrong mm. but like i usually see uh christians explaining it like saying that god was speaking metaphorically because obviously the malachites came back later so obviously they, they didn't kill them all yeah not necessarily or, like, not necessarily listen listen let, let us say let us say it's not metaphorically let us say it is literally even that is acceptable for a, for a very simple reason the bible says the one who lived by the sword he died by the sword I'm talking about the Old Testament and even the New Testament. The Old Testament teach the Jews to live by the law of Moses, which which an eye for an eye. So people who attack me and kill me and rape my women and kill my children and kill my animals, the Jews themselves, they've been taken as a slave twice the whole nation. So we are talking about time of thousands of years ago and you are trying to see things in your eyes today. We are talking about a time where everybody enslave everybody, everybody kill everybody, everybody rape everybody, and you are trying to survive. So in order to survive with evil neighbors, you have to fight their evil by all measure you can. As an example, when you are a person who have a neighbor 
he is willing to burn your house any second any moment and you know he did it before and he will do it again so what you will do either you say I am a nice person I will never do that to him and then he come and he slaughter you or you say I'm going to do to him what he did to me so at least he will know that he what he does is going to be punished and it's going to be harsh punished the same as he punished me before and the same let's say the same he treated me before so in order to see some you know something my friend you have to see it in the eyes of people who live at that time when we speak about Muhammad the Jews never attack him the Jews never have a war with him Muhammad actually he was a refugee between the Jews Muhammad he was a refugee between the Christian and then he betrayed him and he decided to kill them all because they refused him to be a prophet if you read the chapter 9 verse 29 it says that Allah ordered Muhammad to fight those who don't believe in Islam but it doesn't say why or what it says because they say that Jesus is the son of God and the Jews they say that Uzair is the son of Allah but this is not an uh, you know why you want to kill them for that they, they gave you a refugee they protected you they were nice to you why you want to do them even Muhammad Muslim they claim that Muhammad he married a Christian woman so why yesterday you marry a Christian woman today you want to kill them because Muhammad was a thief he is a gang leader he changed his color the bend in the situation when he was weak he is very nice he's very kind I'm not going to kill you even he says in the Quran that all oh, the Jews the Christian the Sabi and they will go to heaven the second Muhammad he became strong he do not need the Jews he do not need the Christian he do not need the Sabi and he wanna slaughter them all okay uh, but like surely you can agree with me that killing infants is wrong like they shouldn't suffer for the sins of their parents like, my friend they did not kill infant they did not kill infant they did not nobody kill infant same time same time uh, killing infant is not wrong I will tell you why God in the Bible teach that God he killed by the flood of Noah he killed infant he killed babies he killed women he killed animals he killed so God when he killed he takes soul he gave so you are trying to judge by your own, your own scale as an example we are in the year 2018 when an airplane bomb a bunch of terrorists somewhere and they are hiding be, be, be between houses how come today you accept that there is babies and there is women they are get, going to get killed it's a must they are hiding between women and children still nobody nobody mind nobody mind all countries in the world they use bombs and bombs are not really smart weapon because you don't see what you are hitting whoever inside that truck is going to die whoever inside that airplane is going to die who is inside that house is going to die it doesn't matter if it's an infant if it's right if it's an old so you see the morality of people are are, are, are let us say uh, is, is is about we pick our morality when we want and we forget about it when we want yeah but like they didn't have bombs back then right so my like, friend my friend no problem they don't have bombs but you still I'm, I'm i'm showing to you that you claim that you have different morality or better morality in 2018 but still you do the same people today who people who defend morality defend immigrant defend etc they are the one who do abortion they kill babies so if you kill your own babies and now you are complaining that the enemy kill your baby aren't you both the same if you make a law legalizing killing babies who gave you the right to kill babies it is your own baby you kill him so people they they play game of morality when they want and they forget about it when they want it's like somebody giving me a speech about not to look at women but he himself he work as a pimp this is how a human being always function when he want he is super moral when he want morality is gone so for me as a Christian, I believe that God He take what He gave. And judgment okay, day, uh, in judgment day, let me tell you something. Jesus said that in the judgment day, Jesus will say, Bring them in front of me and slay them. How about how about that? Yeah. Okay, is that oh, mean uh, is I, that mean Jesus is a bad person for you? What do you think? No, I'm actually uh, I'm okay, I'm okay with that because I read about it and this is supposedly judgment day. So hmm. judgment day. Is but not isn't really... this is a proof to you that uh, Jesus is God? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if you read that context. Yeah, because bring them in front of me and what? Slay them. Who are you? God. Yeah. Right. So anyway, but like, friend, uh, let me let me call this Muslim. 
um, because I, I made this video uh, to speak about a specific topic about the Quran and I'm hoping the Muslim will call I don't know what happened to this guy he tried to call me when you are with me and then he 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 uh, he went in a coma let me call him and please feel free to listen and maybe some other time you can call us when we are speaking about different topic all right okay I hope my answers are uh, you know you like them this time however you know I, I'm, I'm not here really to make you like my answers I'm here to explain to you what I believe and it's up to you to pick up what okay. what you like all right okay all right my friend it is called Abu Samaya again let us see what's happening with Abu Samaya what happened to you Abu Samaya look Abu Samaya maybe somebody told him don't do it <clears throat> It takes him. Let us see. When the Muslims they speak about Quran, which is a perfect Arabic, the Quran is the most stupid book ever you can imagine. To the point there's no connection between the verse before and the verse after it. And that is a weakness in the Arabic, not alone, not only how many mistakes in the grammar, how many mistakes in, in, in a, a, a script, how many mistakes, even, even the God of Islam, he chose the wrong language. To the point Muhammad himself, he said, that the people they are not capable of understanding the Quran unless Allah sent the Quran in seven letters. Seven letters. Now the Quran is so clear, but yet the Muslims, Muhammad in his time, he's saying, My people they cannot, and they are not capable of understanding the Quran. Unless you send it to me in seven Quran. And yet you claim that the Quran was a clear book and it was written in a great Arabic language. It's a great to the point, even Arab, they cannot understand the Quran. It's a great to the point that Muhammad, he required seven Quran in different dialect. So may the Arab understand what the Quran is about. And yet after the seven Quran, still the Muslims cannot understand anything about Quran. To the point they disagree about every single verse in the Quran. This is why you find thousands and thousands of interpretation. At the end of every interpretation, it says Allah knows best. A clear Arabic language do not need millions of interpretation, which all end to nothing. When I give you a clear Arabic, that's mean I gave you a clear understanding. When I am proud about a language, about how clear it is and how powerful it is, then I find that I cannot explain to you a simple verse in the Quran and I have to say only Allah knows what he meant in this. That's mean your Quran is a shish kebab. When the Quran says that Allah, he gave Quran to Muhammad, And this Quran is a pure and free from Arabic, from non-Arabic words. And when we find the Quran is full of non-Arabic words. And by the way, I can show you from Islamic books, long list of Arabic words, which Muslims think it's Arabic word, but it's not. And how Muslims they explain that? They say it doesn't hurt if we the Quran use the foreign words. 
because simply uh, what 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 uh, what Allah would do those are the words which for those items so like today you go to Egypt you see someone he's an Egyptian speaking Arabic but yet he used the word computer so well we have to use the word computer but this is false because if this is a pure Arabic still you have to keep your promise you have to make it pure When you say this is a pure Arabic and then we find that there's tons of words have nothing to do with Arabic That's mean this is a false promise and this is a false challenge If we try to count the words in the Quran, which is not Arabic, it's endless, like uh, Araik, Araik, which means cushions. What Araik? There's nothing in Arabic that's called Araik. Awab, Jahannam, Hawariyun, Arras, Asturat, Ghaid. Qasura, Kaflin, Mishkat, Istabraq, Ab, Alim, Hasab, Dinar. I mean, it's endless. Taghut, Tabut, Jannah, Firdos, Bustas, Wizard, Kafur. Mehel, Manas, Yaqut. I mean, uh, we, we will spend the whole day counting words which is not Arabic. But yet, the stupid Quran keeps saying that this is a pure Arabic. And the funny that the Muslim themselves they agree that the Quran is full of words which is not Arabic. So, how you agree in the same time? You say to us that the Quran, your God, he says that this is a pure Arabic word. What happened to Abu Samaya? I wanted to talk to this guy, Abu Samaya, because he looked like a long beard. His beard is so long. You see, I texted him, look, look. He called me when this uh, person was talking. Okay. He's wearing Islamic clothes. He have a little, uh, you know, next to him wearing hijab. And I called him already. He called me. All right. I could not take it when this person was called, was calling. I called him again and I called him. Let us call him again one more time. Here we go. He flee. Who is a Muslim would like to call us? If we go back to this guy who was posting in the text about uh, uh, about the Hebrew, where is this guy? Let us go. Looks like we miss it. Hold on. Just to show you how people they make they make stupid claims they don't even use their brain when they talk hello hello this is christian prince yes abu sumaya how are you i'm doing fine i was going to speak with you tonight but unfortunately i had a death in my family so uh, that's sorry, why sorry to hear about that my friend so you still do, doing the base huh well, you know, we want uh, like you we, still debating, huh? we, we want to save Muslims from the evil of Islam. What do you think? Shouldn't we? No, nah, I just don't. I don't engage in debates no more. I just like it's something that I grow out, grow out of. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand what. I yeah, my phone cut out a little bit. I said I don't debate no more. I just something I grew out of and just ain't a part of my life no more. I mean, I spent ten years on Pal Talk debating people. 
and I, I don't see really. So you no, talk, you talked to me before. I was on my ear. I don't remember oh, you. You did talk to me before. So, you know what I'm saying? You did talk to me before. And Pal talk. Yeah, uh -huh. remember, yeah. You had it wrong for like twelve years on Pal talk. You don't remember? Yes, yes, sure. I remember. But I, I don't remember talking to you. I don't. I don't remember who are you anyway. But anyway, so why are you still That's a Muslim? Abu, 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 Abu why are you still a Muslim? Why you didn't leave Islam yet? It's never, it's never going to change. I mean, why? I convert to Islam. I'm yeah. never going to leave Islam. You will leave no Islam. Matter which, you want to? You want to bet? You want to bet that you will leave Islam? You will leave Islam. Let me tell you. Something. Let me tell you something. You're not dealing with your typical Sunni Muslim. You're not dealing with your Wahhabi Salafi typical Muslim. Okay? What does that mean? What, what that means? The Salafi Muslim, other real Muslims. Who's been trained on the scholars who's from the Ashara school who deals with a concept which you might know called Hukum Akli. I deal with rational proof. Rational. Well, they, oh, hold on, hold on. But there is nothing rational in Islam, my friend. How you go by rational, but there's nothing rational in Islam. Give an example about something rational in Islam. Go ahead. Are arguing about how Islam is false. No, 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 no. You see, you just said, my friend, you just yeah. said something rational in Islam. You said rational, right? Rational. Show me one thing is rational in Islam. Is it rational to give me eighty thousand women for sex in heaven and eighty thousand slave boy? Is that rational? Is that rational? My friend, I'm sure. I'm, I'm what? I'm what? I can't understand. I'm not going to continue this conversation. I, hold on, I don't understand. Sh say again, what? What you said? I'm not going to continue this conversation around my children. You want to talk? We'll talk at another time. But I'm not going to continue to listen to this poison around my children. Oh, you are afraid now to your children? They will leave Islam sooner or later. They will listen to me and they will hear me and they will leave Islam. Don't worry, it's coming. Millions of Muslims are leaving Islam. You think you have, you can run away with your children from the truth? You cannot. You see, he knew. That what I am saying, he will he will change the life of his children. When you say to me that I go by what as right, right, you know, right, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, righteous or rational, you know, whatever you want to say. I mean, th this is stupid because there's nothing in this religion is rational. Hello. Hi, Christian Prince. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm all right. What I'm do you want to say to us? I have one rational thing that um, okay you as a Muslim you have something rational for us give it to us go ahead Islam is the only religion hmm. that actually unifies all the other faiths under God that is a big fat lie my friend I'll tell you why right? that's a big fat lie show it to me here we go it's a challenge in front of my I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, insulting you I'm just saying whoever told you that he lied to you show me how Islam unify all religions and the one faith go ahead well, our understanding is that hmm. there have been over 184,000 prophets. It's, it's what? What? There's been over 184,000 prophets. 184,000 prophets. So we believe that all these prophets. Okay, are, what, what, what happened to those prophets? What is their names? I'm telling you the, the, um, the idea behind why I believe Islam is the only unifying religion. So. <laughs> you see, you just said you just said something proving Muhammad to be a liar, my friend. Because you just said there's 184,000 prophet, and the Quran says in chapter 14, verse number four, uh, we never send any messenger except in the language and the tongue of his own people. Do you agree with the Quran or not? Of course. Okay. So who is the Muslim messenger to India who speak the tongue of India? There's more than 400 languages in India alone. I don't know his name. Hmm. I'm just, I'm just giving you the general so idea. So, from from all the four hundred nation languages, ethnic group in India, you could not find me one person. Isn't it weird? You know, even though I don't know the names of the prophets, but this is I not the problem. This is not the, the issue. The issue is that you are a taken. You taken. You taken into consideration as a fact when it is something cannot be proven. I cannot say now that I have a God who sent to every nation. He sent a million messenger. Okay, what? Give me a name of them. I cannot. That's mean I'm I'm fabricating a lie. Did the Hindu mention any 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 prophet is a Muslim prophet before? No. Did the Indian from any religion? There's tons of religion in India. Did they mention that? No. What about the Chinese? What about the Japanese? What about the the, the all the Asian nation? Where is those messengers? Did nobody heard of them? Did your God Allah He send a messenger to the Indian in America and North America or South America? So this is a big fat lie. This is alone is a proof to us that Islam is a false religion. Secondly, when you say that Allah He sent one hundred eighty four thousand messenger, but yet 
still he cannot make us Muslims. This means he's a big failure. No, 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 he's not yes. failure. Uh, listen, lady, you. listen, lady. When he sent 184,000 messengers, did he send books with them? I, I don't know. Okay, because that's mean. That's mean that you have a God who have a library, and this library have 184,000 book. But only one book, the Muslim claim, is left on this library. Your God, your God is the worst librarian ever in history. He could not preserve the 184,000 books and he lost all of them except one. That is the Quran. How we can trust this God to be God? Imagine you have a guy, you give him a, a key for a building and he have inside this building 184,000 book. And then we come back after many years. And then we open the building and we find that in this building there's only one book in the shelf how funny this guardian for the book is he will spend the rest of his life in jail and nobody will believe that he lost them people will believe that he is corrupt and he sold them in the black market don't you agree no what do you mean no what is then where is the 184,000 prophet books what happened to them all of them they're gone well, you know, the, the some Jamaicans, they also had a prophet. Oh, the um, Jamaican, they have a prophet. Oh, okay. What his name? His name was Muhammad? No, no, no. They had a pro they Their religion is called Rastafarian, right? Ra so, yeah, Rapso. Yeah, no, okay. What does it have to do with Muhammad, with Allah? You see, you are, it, you are yeah. mixing things up. The, the Jamaican, they believe in uh, voodoo and, you know, many crazy stuff. Don't, don't go there. Listen, listen, lady. Is it true that Aisha, she said that your Quran was eaten by a goat? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really study hadiths. You know, I study the Quran alone. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not like as smart as you when it comes to hadith and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so did, the, guess, did the Quran was the Quran a victim of a goat? And the goat okay. ate the Quran. Okay. Why Allah He is God, yet He could not stop a goat from eating the book of God. I mean, this <laughs> is not a, this is not an army. This is not CIA. This is not a KGB. It's just a poor goat. How the goat ate the book of Allah? Well, you know, humans have a part to play too. It's not just God is going to do everything for us. You know, we have to put our... No, but this is not true because the Quran says that Allah is going to preserve the Quran. That can be a good scenario if your God did not open his mouth and he said, Inna alayna jam'uhu wa Quranahu. It is on us to collect the Quran and to recite the Quran. So as long Allah, He is the one who promised that He will collect the Quran, then we cannot accept anyone, you know, to say to us what you said, because He said, "I'm going. It's on me. It is on me. Who Allah? You know, Inna alayna jamu wa Quranahu, chapter seventy-five, verse number uh, 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 seventeen. So you cannot say to me, "Oh, we have a duty as a human to protect the Quran," because Allah, He confirmed that this is His duty. No, I'm seeing from the goat and like from kids or from something that you know if we have a Quran we put it on the shelf I don't know how it got how you the... can how you can preserve the Quran if the goat ate it already can you recite for me the verses which the goat ate you cannot that's it it's in the belly of the goat now and until now we could not find this goat it's missing if you go to the FBI website you will you will see in the front page it says the big name wanted if you go, this is in America. If you go to Saudi Arabia, until now you will see that goat picture is there because until now it's missing, and we need to find desperately those verses. Wait, so did you know that other that you know the way it's preserved is through memorization? My, my friend, what preserved? Can you recite for me the verses which was in the which the goat ate? Can you? Here we go. I'm listening to you. You preserve it by memorization. Tell me the verses which the goat ate. Just as an example. No, no, no. Okay, so what are you saying that the goat ate a part and now it's not there? Yes, it's not there. It's not there. There, it says, it says, it says that there is ton, the 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 verses of ten time breastfeeding for adult. Your God, Allah, mashallah, He allow you as a woman. With my respect to you, I'm not trying to insult you. Don't take me wrong. But this is what it says that Allah, He allow you as a woman to give your breast to a strange man, and He will suck it ten different time, and He is satisfied. And then after that, you are lawful for him to be with him uh, next to him in the in the in the same couch. 
It's not the show me the verse. Here we go. I'm gonna see it. Well, we can Wait, find this verse. That is not what Allah said. Sorry? Where did you get that from? Here we go. It's in front of us. Here we go. Read it with me. The verse of stoning and breastfeeding for adult 10 times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and the time sheep came and ate it. And then that verse, they continue saying here, and that verses were abrogated in recitation, but not in, in ruling. Okay. So re re abrogate by recitation by what by a verse about five times five time but we cannot find even the one five times so we cannot find the five we cannot find the ten yeah i don't believe that well, it's not up to you it's this is this is your history this is your Aisha saying that what about your prophet saying he let us let me show you are you saying to me that there is no way in islam that if the prophet of allah he ordered women to give their nipples to stranger to suck it ten different time are you saying that yeah that's haram Okay, am I ready? Here we go. I, again, uh, uh, please don't don't think I'm trying to insult you or to be rude to you. So listen to yeah. me carefully. Here we go. This is Sahih Muslim. And this is Ibn Majah. And this is Sunan al Nisa'i. You choose which book you want. It is Sahih Hadith. And the Muslims agree upon it. That a woman, her name is Sahla bintu Suhail. She came to the Prophet and she said to him, there is a you know my husband is upset from the guy who is coming to my house and who you know he stay with us because he's a slave there he's a man so muhammad he said suckle him she said how i'm going to suckle him and he's a growing man can you see my screen with me yeah i can okay so this is what your prophet said it's a crazy i know it's a very 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 confusing very stupid i mean a hey, man are you so sure that the prophet said that I mean, because this is this is Sahih Muslim. This is not me. This is your scholar saying that. This is your. This is Aisha saying that. This is this, the, the the people of around Muhammad saying that. It's not my, not not me. I wasn't there. How do we know that though? How do you know, you know that the Quran says what it says? The Quran is coming to you through the people. To the same people you are receiving the Quran from is the same people who received the Hadith from. Okay, but if you know if, if God is telling us, you know, you can't have relations with men. Outside of marriage, why would this would contradict the Quran? Well, so, this is here according to Muhammad is not a relationship. It's it is it is something to do to stop any relationship. Muhammad he think he's wise. So if a man he look at you in a dirty way, let us say you are going in the bus, you can go by the way. If you speak Arabic, you can watch the the video. You will see a, a, an Egyptian. An Egyptian she was asking a big sheikh from Al Azhar University that uh, she said to him, "Are you saying now I work in a studio that I have to give my boobs to all those men who work in the studio?" He said, "Yes." She said, what if I go in a bus? He said, you have to give it to all of them. So you, this is your prophet saying that this, this is not you or me or anyone. The dean of the Azhar University for the Hadith department, he made a fatwa that a woman, if she want to stay alone with a strange man, she have to give him her boobs 10 times, 10 different times, not in one time, which means in 10 different times. And he have to suck it until he is satisfied. Yeah, I don't believe that. Sorry. You don't believe because you are ashamed of it. This is the whole point. But as you see, it's in the front of you. I'm not the one. This is your Muslim website. This is your Muslim book. This is your Muslim scholar. This is the, the this is the wife of Muhammad, and this is not a Christian prince. No, because in the Quran it says that the wives of the Prophet should stay home, and that they are unlike other women, and they should yield themselves. No, yeah, my friend. The the the, the history of Islam report that Aisha she took an army to fight Ali, and she took she she caused the death of more than ten thousand Muslims. What are you talking about? And 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 Muslim women they used to be taken for fun with the Muslims in the in, during the war time. This is why your prophet allowed you to do muta. How many days a Muslim man and a Muslim woman they can have fun together before marriage? Zero. Zero, as I know, it's three days and three night. From where? Well, because your prophet he said any man and any woman they like to have sex together they can have sex for three days and if they like it they can increase here we go read with me the screen do you see it Allah messenger said if any man and woman agree and here they say to, uh, to marry temporarily by the way doesn't say that this is a uh, this is a fiction between two brackets it doesn't say anywhere to marry so if any man or a woman agree uh, to have three uh, uh, relationship, it doesn't say marriage. Here we go. Let me show you the Arabic. I don't know if you know Arabic. 
أن يتزايد أو يتتركا تتركا. So any man, any women, they like to have relationship together for three night. If they like, they can increase. And if they like, they can okay, separate. So, so how are you going to prove to us that this hadiths are actually the sayings of the Prophet? Because I don't well, really believe it. You need to prove it to me, not me, not me proving it to you. Okay, because I, you are the Muslim. You are the Muslim who believe in this garbage, my friend, not me. This is Sahir Bukhari. I don't, I don't I don't believe in anything Muhammad he said. I, I don't believe, even if he's speaking in front of me, I believe this man is a big fat liar. So I am showing you your book. This is not my book. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the most authentic book after the Quran. This is number two. I told you that I don't believe in hadiths. I never actually studied hadiths. Hmm. Because is part of my faith. So you believe in the Quran? Yeah. Let me ask you, do you watch cartoon? Yes, I okay. do watch the, I, I like cartoon, me and you. That So we have something to share. Let us see. What about the Quran? It speak about that Suleiman, he have an army of a chicken and army of genie and a human. Do you believe in that? Um... Can you explain that 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 chapter to me? If you go in chapter twenty-seven, verse you can read it. The whole chapter is very funny. I like it. It's my favorite chapter since I was a kid. I used to read it almost every day, just like especially when we don't have electricity and there's no cartoon on the TV. So chapter twenty-seven, verse number twenty. Here we go. Read. You will see. It says the following. Your prophet Suleiman, and supposedly he's a Muslim prophet like your Muhammad. Muhammad is talking about him, Allah is talking about him now. And it says, And before Suleiman or Solomon were marshaled his host of jinn and men and birds, and they were all kept in order and ranks, like ooh, ah, one, two, one, two, chicken, genie, human army. He have a three army, one of genie one of men and one of birds what do you say this is quran are you going to say to me the quran is a lie too you don't believe it no i i believe there is something you know there's a message to be hmm. behind the, the story of solomon hmm. so now you believe that that, that there's a there's a prophet of god he have an army of birds and chicken well you know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say that he he doesn't shy away from using what, what, oh, I mean, what the point? What what I will do with the army of a chicken? And look, do you know? Do you know the the leader of the army of the chicken? Who is he? Do you know who's okay. he? Do you know who's he? His, no. his, his name is Al Hudhud. Do you know what Al Hudhud is? I uh, know. Okay, here we go. It says here. Uh, and he took a master of the bird. The master, the master of the bird. Okay, the, this is a general, general, general. Do you know, let me show you? Uh, uh, do you speak Arabic? Yeah. Okay. If we go now and search for what Al Hudhud means, give me a second to show it to you on the screen. Okay. All right. This is Al Hudhud. Let us put it in the screen. Small, tiny bird. And obviously, Muhammad, he chose him to be the general because uh, he have something in his head. It looked like a rank. Huh? I mean, it makes sense. So this is Al-Hudhud. There's many, many pictures of him. I don't know if you get an idea now. Did you get the idea which one we are talking about? No, I can't see the um you can't see the screen? Look at the screen. Yeah, all I see is the clouds. Okay, now I see it. Okay, this is the hudhud. According to your Quran, this is General Hudhud, who is in charge of the army of the birds. What do you think? Your God is telling us a true story, or this is something for cartoon for kids? Okay, so there is a, the story of Solomon with the jinn and them. Okay, so let's think about it, right? Hmm. Let us think about it. Go ahead. We are thinking. Okay, let's let's go back to the, the chapter. Hmm. There's jinn. So what do we know about jinn? We know that there's smokeless 
They're, Jen, what is Jen? Have you ever seen a genie? Yeah, I saw in my dreams a genie before. You saw a genie before? In my dream, though. In your gym? In my dream. On your dream? Ah. <laughs> I saw, yeah. I saw, you know, I, I have, I have a friend. He saw, he saw a genie in his dream. It was his mother-in-law. I'm not sure what you saw yourself. What, what do you mean you saw a genie in your dream? What is the genie? What is genie? Um, it's a, it's another creation by, by God. Uh huh. And it's made of smokeless fire. So when I saw it in my dream, I saw the form of the genie. Hmm. But you can see through it. I saw it through it. Is it true that you Muslims believe that genie can have sex with you? Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, what do you mean? I don't know. Know. Come on, be honest with me. You know that. Even there is a Muslim, he opened the door on his wife. He found a fire, with my respect to you, he found the fire in her private part and he claimed that this is, was the reason because of the genie he was sleeping with her because genie is made from fire, correct? I mean, I, don't, I haven't heard that story. Mm. Like, okay. I've never personally experienced anything like that all right so now okay. Suleiman, he have an army of genie what he did with the army of genie okay so he had maybe you know by the permission of god yeah but what he would do with the army of genie and army of chicken what he would do exactly he would he occupy which territory with his genie and chicken okay so he was he leading a battle in that particular chapter Right. No, this is a bird. You know, as do you see how small this bird? Do you see how small this bird? This is this is smaller than smaller than a pigeon. Pigeon, pigeon is a bigger than than this bird. How First, what what this bird will do in a war time? What this bird can do? Can you tell me? He will go and kill the the small uh, mosquito. What he will do? If there is a lot of them, they can do some damage. Yeah. Man. Yeah. But do you know what this bird is about? This bird, according to your God. He have a special qualification. He can see and find women who have no hair in their legs. Really? Yeah. Which I really, I, I want to buy one because I, I, until now I'm single and I cannot find a woman. She don't have hair in her legs. So I want to get one like this. <laughs> if you know somebody, he can sell those birds, please. You know, I want to, I want to buy one because I'm desperately looking for a woman. She have no hair in her legs. He's, this is the only one who can do that. If Allah says so, it must be true. Are you laughing? Okay, so <laughs> anyway, you said so. So Solomon, Sarah, Sarah, let, it, let, us, let, let, us, let us do this, Sarah. You say to me that okay. you, you you know you as a Muslim, why you are a Muslim? I mean, look at this. This is don't 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 can't you tell this is really crazy? I mean, what kind of God? Who is going to believe those? Uh, the, like, have you have you have you heard that Suleiman? He heard the speech of the ant. Did you hear that about that story? That Suleiman, he heard the speech of the ant? Yeah, the one where... Okay, do you know that the ants don't the, talk? The, the ants don't have a speech. Ants are mute. So how Suleiman, he heard the speech of the ant? How he can hear it? Ants are mute. Well, ants, it... ants, they communicate by chemical and by vibration only. They don't talk. Look here it says. So... When when Suleiman walk with his horse, his army, uh, one of the ants uh, in the in the valley of ants. By the way, my house in the Middle East is about like twenty kilometers from the uh, valley of ant. You know, we are neighbors. So when he arrived there, one of the ant, one of the ant, when he arrived mm -hmm. to the lowly valley of ants, one of the ants said. Oh ye ants, get into your habitation, lest Solomon and his host, which means the, the, the army of chicken and the genie, crush you under, under his foot without knowing it. So he smiled, amused at her speech. How Suleiman was, how he can hear the speech of the ant if the ant are mute? <clears throat> If God, you know, God had to give him that ability. Mm. Do you know how many ants in the valley of ants? How he can hear only one ant? What is the secret behind that? I mean, only one ant spoke. There's like a million ants in there, and there's only one ant she spoke and she said, Hide. What about the rest of the ants? What they said? Takbir? I don't know. But I'm saying that, if, you know, just like Isa, Jesus, mm. he was given powers by God. Ah. So the same thing with Solomon's ability. Okay, why why Isa have power by God 
and his power about resurrecting people from death making the blind see but Suleiman he have a power of things nobody see it's uh, just fiction obviously like flying carpet flying carpet Suleiman have a flying carpet can flying carpet can carry 600,000 chair do you really believe in flying carpets uh, Sarah be honest with me you believe in flying carpet a flying carpet yeah no you don't believe in flying carpet what do you mean I saw it in Alibaba it's true well, I've never seen a carpet flying, so I don't. I saw, I saw it in the cartoon. It's true. As long as it's in the cartoon, must be true. So, are you saying to me that you will not believe in a flying carpet if I show it to you now, a cartoon? No. Uh huh. I mean, I'm really, I'm really surprised. I thought cartoon is the best way to make you believe in something. Well, hold on. You just said that you don't believe in a flying carpet, but this is in the Quran. Yeah, but I'm saying that you know Allah did tell us mm. that some of the stories. Are metaphorical or you know they're no, those they're are not those are not metaphorical those are not metaphorical this is about the flying carpet and we can show you what even your prophet said about them there's nothing metaphorical you know chapter 21 verse number 81 if we go just to show you I'm not making things up I will go to the interpretation to show you what interpretation says so you will see the Christian Prince he have nothing to say from his own okay let us go uh, All right. Here we go. And to Suleiman, we subjected the wind strongly ragging means we subjected a strong wind to Suleiman. Tajribi Amri, he running from his command towards the land which he blessed, meaning the land of Hashem. Okay, let us see what does that mean. And if everything we are all know, what Allah is saying. He had a mat made of wood. Who had who had that carpet? Suleiman, made of what? Made of wood, which he would place all the equipment of his kingship, horses, camels, tents, and troops, and then he would command the wind to carry it, and he would go it, it which means the wind go uh, underneath it and would carry him aloft. Shading him and protecting him uh, from the heat. So Suleiman now he is he flying with the flying carpet and he put all his kingdom. The whole kingdom is a flying. This is not a Boeing 777. This is bigger, 600,000 chair only. This is chairs plus all the animals, plus all the chickens, plus all the, the elephant, all the horses, all the war equipment, everything in the top of the flying carpet. And then in the top of him. There's the birds who fly to keep him in shade. And you know what birds do when they fly in the top of you? They will shower you with boo-poo. You know that, right, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. So Suleiman, now we can imagine how much he is covered by poo, -poo. The poo, poo is all over him. He have like a million birds in the top of him. So enter, he reach wherever he wanted to go in the land. So what, what your Quran teaching us, that Suleiman, when he want to go, let us say, from uh, from Jerusalem, he want to go to Los Angeles. What he do? He said the flying yeah. carpet come the flying carpet uh-huh the flying carpet come and all his army jump in the flying carpet and they put the 600 chairs there and they put all the camels the horses and everybody everybody come on take me Allahu Akbar everybody everybody okay. go on the top of the flying carpet and we go to Los Angeles what do you think this is a true story so I think that the um the message of that story is that God gives powers to whom he wants hmm. you know so for Solomon, it would be the control of, you know, the wind, the jinn. Mm. Um, what else did he do? Mm. So you really, are, so you really believe in the flying carpet. I, I remember just five minutes ago when you told me you don't believe in flying carpet. Now you are saying you believe in the flying carpet. I told you what the what I okay. So the message of it is that God gives powers to whom He wills. Yeah, but this is, is not power. This is flying carpet, my friend. This is not power. This is a flying carpet. What power? This is a okay. flying carpet. Do you really believe in flying carpet? Do you believe that there is somebody can fly with his kingdom? Um, we fly in airplanes today. I yeah, bet you the yeah, fly. yeah, but airplane, airplane is not a flying carpet. There's an engine and there is etc. and cannot carry six hundred thousand chairs. 
Six hundred thousand shares is a bigger than a city. Yeah, but in, we're capable of building an airplane, and no one knew that before. Uh, hold on, but but uh, but there is a huge difference between this and that. You know, this is a flying carpet. You order it by order. Hey, flying carpet, the flying carpet, they carry you, and all the kingdom is carried. This is this is this is uh, this is uh, cannot be true. Why why the Jews why the why the the book of the Jews the Bible did not mention the flying carpet of Suleiman? I mean why they are hiding it? What do you think? Do you think the Jews they saw it in auction? They cut it apart and they saw it in, why the Jews in their holy book did not tell us about the carpet of Suleiman? Uh, is it in there? Have you read the Torah? Well, not in the Torah, but I can find you where Muhammad he got the stories from. There's a book I advise you to read. It's called The Legions of the Jews. Or you can go and get my books from Amazon. Go to Amazon.com. Or if you live in Europe, like Amazon, Germany, etc. And you can get my books. You will see where Muhammad is getting those stories. Muhammad okay. is copying a story from The Legions of the Jews, which is not a true. It's just a fiction. The Jews, they used to tell it to their kids about the glory of Solomon, the glory of uh, uh, David, the glory of their rabbis, the glory of their kings. It's a fiction story. Muhammad, he took it, he put it in his Quran, and he said, this is from my God, this is a true story. But those are stories they used to train their kids. Yeah, but, um, you know, I was going to say Yeah, but obviously, this is a lie. As an example, in the Quran, there's a story about the seven sleepers in chapter 18. Seven sleepers, everybody knows that this is a story written by a Christian. He is from Syria. His name, Bishop Yaqub. And he wrote a story for the youth to, to, to encourage them to handle the discrimination. It's a fiction story. See, that's my point is that there's, you know, behind the stories, whether in the Torah, the yeah, Bible. But, but, uh, but your God, the problem is your God, he takes the story from this guy, which is a fiction story, and he speak about it as if it's a real story, and he claims it's coming from Allah. Imagine I write a book. Imagine Shakespeare, he write a book. And then your God, he takes the story. He says, I am the one who wrote the book of Shakespeare. The thing is that, you know, from the Bible and from the Torah, this is the same God that's talking. No, it's not the same God. My God, uh, hold on, hold on. We're not the same God. You know, your God is is uh, is not exist. Your God, uh, you know, uh, is a pagan God. As an example, why your prophet he kissed the black stone? Why why your prophet he kissed the black stone? I mean, you read that in Hadith, didn't you? Well, I read I, that in the Hadith. I, don't, don't you pray in the direction of that stone today? Don't you? Yeah. Do you know okay. it's the golden ratio of the earth? The golden ratio. This is have to do with the with the with what? That's a sign for mankind. This is a sign for one card. What? This is the Trinity. Golden ratio is one to two. That's means a Trinity. Do you, do yeah. you Muslim believe in the Trinity? So of the universe, the Earth. I mean. I know. I know. But but That's but 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 the golden ratio is one to two, three Trinity. So do you believe in the Trinity? No, I don't believe in the Trinity. So why you are mentioning the golden ratio? You have nothing to do with the golden ratio. What golden ratio? The the golden ratio where we see it in like. When in God's like best creations, like even the human face has the golden ratio. My my friend, I'm not an atheist. I believe in God. You don't tell me that. This is something you tell to somebody who's an atheist. This is not my business now. I'm asking you why you Muslims pray toward the stone in direction of a stone, bow in front of a stone, and you kiss a stone. If you are a person who worship the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, and you don't believe in the paganism, why you kiss the stones and go around the stone and bow down in front of a stone? Tell me. So the Qibla was changed, right? The, this, is not the, this, this, is not, this is not a question. Why you kiss a stone, pray in front of a stone, pray in the direction of a stone, go around a stone? This is the question. It's, uh, um, I don't know the answer. I can't tell you the answer. Yeah, because you're a pagan. That's, that, that's the whole story. Yeah. Pe people who it's kiss not, stones, people who think stones are holy, they must be pagans. As simple as that. There's no holy stone. But stone is stone. stone? Huh? They're not worshipping the stone. What do you, so why you kiss the stone? Tell me you don't worship the stone. So why you kiss the stone? You know people kiss food. No, th this is this I, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on I kiss food. I, I kiss food as a symbolic for th being thankful for God because I eat it. Okay. Do you eat the stone? No, okay. So why you kiss the stone? Give me the reason I kiss my mother as an example I kiss her hand, huh? Does that mean I worship my mother? No, but my this is my mother you why you kiss the stone? She is your mother? I think people, you know, kiss it because they love the prophet. So, and, so and why the prophet kiss it? Okay, people they kiss. Guys, this is a good answer. She's smart. People they kiss the stone because they love the prophet. Okay, why the prophet he kiss the stone? 
to, I don't know why he, he did that mm, because he's a pagan obviously he's a pagan man you know you you Muslims you follow Muhammad blindly it doesn't matter what you do he kiss a stone he kiss a stone you know I, I don't want to be rude with you what if Muhammad he kiss a donkey are you going to kiss the donkey too what if Muhammad he tie a donkey to the Kaaba and he kissed the, the bum of the donkey are you all of you Muslims you will kiss the donkey just because you he kissed a donkey you do know that he his his job was to deliver the message and he's done that what message he, he made a message says any woman she want to take off her panty is that the message of god any that woman she want to give her panty off to me she is welcome this is the message of god no okay so why he gave this message what does this message have to do with islam if islam is about worshiping god why god he claimed that he gave muhammad verses saying any woman she might take off her panty to muhammad she is welcome what is this message is about tell me yeah, that sounds like someone corrupted it. Thank you very much. Here we go. We are we are getting closer. So that's mean the one who, who the one who corrupt this verse must be the one who have the benefit of the verse. Do you agree? But I don't think that the Quran is corrupt. I think that hadiths have been tampered with. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's a, that's a good idea. But you agree that uh, that idea must be a corrupt. But my 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 friend, this is in the Quran. It's not in the hadith. And you agree that this is must be corrupt. So it doesn't matter where we find it. You say you thought I'm speaking about the Quran, about the hadith. So you said, yeah, I agree, it's corrupt. But now because I I said it's in the Quran, you will say no, it's not corrupt, right? You will you will swallow your tongue again, or you well, will be it, honest. You will be honest. You will stay, and you say yes, must be corrupt. Well, I don't believe the Quran is corrupt, and I have many reasons. Yeah, but uh, but you are the one a second ago you said that such a verse or such a statement must be corrupt, and you thought this is hadith, but this is Quran. Yeah, because in the Quran it says, mm -hmm. and do not, you know, don't go towards the fahishat, right? And one of these my, my, is... My friend, my friend, why Allah, let me repeat the question for you, and you are the one who said it must be corrupt. I said, why Allah will make a verse says to Muhammad that Muhammad told, uh, Allah told Muhammad, any woman she give, she want to give out her panty to him, she is welcome. You said this is, must be corrupt. Okay, this is Quran. So I'm repeating the question for you. Why Muhammad he need, a message like this what Islam do have to do with this what the message of worshiping Allah have to do with any woman she want to take off her panty to the Prophet she is welcome what that will do to Islam wait can you go to that verse no problem chapter 33 verse number 50 here we go here we go and this is only a privilege to Muhammad only only a privilege to Muhammad any believing woman and any believing woman who dictate her panty to the Prophet if the Prophet wish to with her to she doesn't say you know it says to to sleep with her and this is only for thee not for the believer isn't it obvious that this is a corrupt verse made by the corrupt man Muhammad for the benefit of Muhammad who is the only one who get the benefit of this privilege Muhammad is like making a fight a fake insurance policy the first the first thing the, the the police will investigate is the one who get the benefit from this policy if somebody kills somebody and this body he is going to inherit the policy of let's say life insurance then the police they the first the first thing they, should, they try to check is the one who get the benefit of the insurance because he's the one he's the one who get the benefit who is the one who get the benefit here in this verse Muhammad any believing women she want to give her panty to the Prophet why God what 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 Islam have to do with this message what Allah have to do with this message that any woman she can give her pantry to the Prophet I think that says so what, what do you mean God so so why God want to say so this is the question what is what this have to do with Islam I want I want to be a Muslim okay and now God is saying any women including my wife my daughter she want to take off her panty put her legs up to the Prophet what is that that's not what it says. It's, this is what it says. Any woman she can give her to the prophet, and not only that, Muhammad. Well, after, look, hold on. After that, Muhammad he start receiving ugly women. They want to sleep with him, and Muhammad he look at them. They are disgusting. So look what he did. He made the verse right after it. He says, "Though may defer who you know the the one the one who turn away from him or the one who choose." So Muhammad he can okay. Let us say you come to him. He don't like how you look like. Maybe you are older. So he say, "Okay, oh oh." I, this is too much too many women they are coming to sleep with me so what I will do now so he made a verse says that Allah told me I might choose and I might delay the one later later you know later so Muhammad here is giving himself more excuse to use and abuse women because there's many ugly women they start coming to Muhammad and the reason they want to sleep with him because if they sleep with Muhammad they will be considered as women of Muhammad 
and that means they will have a free food forever they will have a retirement plan they will have respect to the believers because that's it they are the excuse my language they are the bitches of muhammad you see the so, gang this you see the gangs they say like excuse my language i don't want to use a bad word but yeah, they, you should respect the dead. I mean, let them let them rest in peace. I am not res I'm not respecting him. This guy, obviously, he is. I'm not talking about your dad. What your dad? I'm talking about your Muhammad. You called the females the B word. It, this is this what it is. This is about those are those are the the whores of Muhammad. They are at his, they are at his wives. They are you, offering themselves for sex. Not true. If somebody's offering themselves for marriage, that's completely. This is not marriage. This is not marriage. Muhammad, he have thirteen women, women already. Name for me one woman she offered herself to Muhammad. She became his wife. Go ahead, do your best. I'm listening. Yes, they married for tribal. No, no, no. I'm listen to me carefully. Those women who offer themselves, name for me one of them. She became his wife. None. Does it even name the females in the Quran? None of them, none of those, because they are not considered there. All, all the females, there's no limit. It's it's a privilege for the Prophet only. So Muhammad is looking for women to take off her the panty. It doesn't matter who they are. But Muhammad what? already already have thirteen wives. Why he need more? All right now, you're you're interpreting it from your perspective, right? I am <laughs> not giving interpretation. I am not. Here we go. It's in the front of you. You give an interpretation. Any yes. lady, do you see? It says any believing women. Did you see any 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 believing women who who right. like to dictate her her not her soul? It says nafsaha in Arabic, which means this is about sex. This is about sleeping with him. Nafsaha, her soul. Yes. Yes. So what, what he what he will get from her? What he will get from this woman? Sex. Okay, name for me, name for me one woman. She dictated herself to Muhammad and she became his wife. Look, so any believing woman mm. who dedicates her soul to the Prophet to do what? Prophet to wishes do what? to do what to do what to him exactly to what she would do to wed her. What what the service he wants from her? What with her? Okay, so if he's traveling and women are you know want to marry him, they're also gonna, you know, be pushing the message. So he's gonna but, give lady, lady, do you see where it says here? Yes, thank you, ho ha. Yes, thank you, Hoha is a continue verse and you speak Arabic, don't you? Okay, so is it if continue? You is it continue? Yes or no? Am I lying? It's I in G to F her. This is not to marry her. Marry so, you marry only once. Okay, not so why does it say if the prophet wishes to wed her? What is that? What mean? is with her? There's no with her here. Same time, name for me one woman of those women who offered themselves. He with her, he slept with her, yes, but he did not even one of them became his wife. Otherwise, name one for me. Go ahead. What does wed mean then? Mary, mm -hmm. Mary, 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 Mary. But there's no Mary here. It's the word is just thank you. Yanka how in Arabic mean to F, the F word. The word the word marriage in Arabic is zawaj. You speak Arabic like me. Tazawaj, tazawaj, not tazawaju. Zawaj, you zawaju, tazwijan. Yes, thank you. Oh, this is nukah, the, the, the actual verb of the sex or the F word. Okay, so, and nukah in Arabic means marriage. No, no, let me show you. Here we go. I will show you from your Islamic Islamic website what is the nikah mean. Give me a second. Here we go. We don't make things up, lady. We don't. Everything we say, we prove. Means like marriage contract. Well, from my understanding. Okay. Okay. Let us see. All right. Look with me in the screen. I will show you on the screen now. This is Islam Al Islam dot org website. Do you see the you see the the top? This is not a Christian website. All right, alislam.org. I think it's clear for you, right? Yeah, we don't. I don't see. I see the calls right now. Okay, do you see it now? Maybe it take time to come to you. Do you see it now? No, not yet. Okay, it will take maybe a second. So this is alislam.org. This is your Islamic website, and it says it clearly. That the word nikah literally mean intercourse. Okay, so read with me carefully. In nikah. Islam, marriage is not restricted of a, a, a platonic relationship between a husband and wife, nor it is a slow, uh, uh, solely uh, for uh, propagation. The Islamic term of marriage is nikah. Do you see it? 
literally yeah. literally means sexual intercourse so marriage is about that are you sure you're saying I'm not saying that it's you who's saying that there's no there's no marriage in Islam you don't use the word marriage you say the F word we as an Arab Christian we use the word Zawaj you as a Muslim you use Nikah the F word what is marriage so this is the same word is in the Arabic Quran it says mm -hmm. yes thank you her which means to do intercourse with her thank you very much okay okay so any Muslim women she want to do intercourse with the Prophet why okay but within marriage though. why why what well, there's no marriage what marriage I just told you to give me one woman she gave herself as a gift to the Prophet to yes thank you her she became his wife give me one you cannot there's none he slept with many women, but there's none of them became his wife because it was it was just for fun. Now, why Allah He need to make a verse for Muhammad that any believing woman she can give her pantry to the Prophet? What is the benefit of Islam for that? Muhammad already is not a single man. You see, if Muhammad was a single man and he's trying to find Muhammad a woman to marry him, I will say, okay, the guy he is trying to find a woman she to so to marry him to be with him. But the guy, he have tons of women. He have many sex slaves in the top of that. Why he need to make such a verse? Says any woman she wanna sleep with me, she is welcome. And he claimed that the one who said that is Allah. Yeah. Why? I mean, in everything that's in the Quran is the word of Allah. Yeah, this, so, is, this is what I'm saying. So why okay. Allah need to make a verse? Says any woman she can give her private part to Muhammad. Why is that? What 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 that will benefit Islam with? What is the point? Muhammad is a man busy with God. He's a prophet of God. This guy, he should be not have time for women. But look, he make tons of verses, and this is a privilege only for him. This is not even for the Muslims. It's only for him. There's no other Muslim can do that. Isn't it obvious that this is Muhammad? He himself is a corrupt man, and he's fabricating words that he claimed that God, he gave it to him. I mean... Every, so I don't know why Allah would tell him to do that, but I, I can only guess. So yeah, I guess. Okay, I guess. Let us see. Guess. Go ahead. And I'm listening. Why? I guess. Why? Why Allah gave him that privilege? I guess to um. Entertainment. You think Muhammad is bored at that time? There's no 4K TV, and he cannot no. watch porn. So Muhammad, he wanted some women to take off their panty for him. No, I don't think that's it. So I what think the reason? Was... What the reason? He have many wives already. So what the reason? That's one of the guesses that we could we could assume. Okay, so so you, so this is a right guess then. He said yeah, because you accept it. Okay, what else? Or it could be that you know to build relations, like to network in relation. Network here... relation by women only. This guy he want to build relationship in the network, guys. He want to open many Facebook with many women, and they take off his pant their panty for. What does this have to do with relationship? Do you know how? Important women are like they play such a huge role when it comes to um, communities. Aren't you the one who told me a second ago that women they have to stay at home, and now you are saying to me they place a, a, a great a great uh, uh, place in, in society? What society? It's those are those Muslim. are believing women already. They are believing women, so they are Muslims. He's not even converting them. They are believing women. They want to take off their panty to the Prophet to do what? Entertainment, obviously. It's about sex. There's nothing else. Does it say he wants to spread Islam with them? He wanna do what he would do. The only thing is he's going to F them, as simple as that. I mean, that's 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 what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank you very much. I agree. That's what it is. Muhammad is a is a is a person who is taking advantage of him claiming to be a prophet, using the poor people around him, ha having sex with their women. And even mm -hmm. Ibn al Arabi said, let me listen, Ibn al Arabi said. That if the prophet his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her immediately so the prophet he can have her. You know that. Do you know that? Okay, so if she gave herself onto the prophet, what, but, but do you agree that if a, if, a, if a man his name is Muhammad, his eye fell onto you, your husband have to divorce you immediately? Do you agree with that? I mean. Like in what are you talking about? You are let us say you are walking. I'm not I'm not insulting you by the way, don't take it as personal. Let us say you are walking in front of Muhammad and he saw you, he liked you. Uh uh according to Islam, if his eyes fail unto you, which means he saw you, he liked you, your husband he have to divorce you immediately so Muhammad can sleep with you. Do you agree with that? No. 
Well, this is what it is. That's what you're saying it is. So I'm not saying that. that. I will show you the reference. You want to see the reference? You want to see the reference? Sure. Okay. Let me find the reference. Let us see. All right, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and this is the Sir Al Qurtubi. I'm sure you are. You know what Al Qurtubi is, right? No. You don't know what Al Qurtubi is? He's a big scholar in Islam. Anyway, this is the Saudi Kingdom, the Saudi Arabia Kingdom website. All right, very well known website. This is the Sir Al Qurtubi, and here Ibn Al Arabi is speaking about the privilege of the Prophet, and he is saying there's 16 of them. All of them, or most of them, is about women and sex with women, or with money. Look what you say here. Qala ibn al Arabi. Let us see what Qala ibn al Arabi. This is Quran interpretation for that verse. Read. You know Arabic. That will make it a lot easier for me. Do you see in the front of you on the screen the Arabic? Do you see it, Sarah? Do you see the Arabic? I see it. Okay. Does it say either Waka Basarahu Ala Imra Wajaba Ala Zaujiha Talakaha Wahala Lahun Wahula Lahun Kahua? How disgusting that is. You just said you you don't accept that. If he if Muhammad he look at you and he like you, your husband must divorce you immediately. So the prophet, he can, with my respect to you, he can sleep with you. What do you say? Interpretation or? Sorry, say again. I lost you. What you said? What? The Quran that is? This is the interpretation for the Quran. It says it clearly that if the prophet of Allah, his eyes fall into a woman, her husband he must immediately divorce the women so the prophet he can f her immediately why i know but can you tell me where which chapter in the quran that is so i can read it for myself this is the same chapter we are talking about uh, lady i you know you are not listening to me this is the same chapter listen this is this is the same chapter chapter 33 verse number 50 and this is Tafsir al-Qurtubi, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Let me show you the banner, so you will see I'm not making things up. This is Tafsir al-Qurtubi, and here I will show you the Saudi Arabia banner address. Here we go. All right. Do you see it? Do you see the screen? Quran.ksu.education.edu.sa, Saudi Arabia. This is a government official website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and this is Tafsir al Qurtubi. And this is what your Islamic cult teach. This is not be a prophet, this is a scam bank. Sarah, Sarah, my 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 friend, my friend, my um, allow me, allow me to, to call you my sister. Maybe you are my younger sister. My sister. I invite you to leave this cult. This cult is disgusting. Muhammad cannot be a prophet of God. There is no way a man he have a dignity. He will force a man to divorce his wife just because he look at his wife and he like her. That is disgusting. That is satanic. That is cannot be a prophet of God. Your net is bad. Did you hear me, Sarah? <laughs> I invite you to leave this cult, Sarah. There is no way, and you are the one who said you don't accept that. You you said that to me. You don't accept that because you have dignity, because you are a good woman. You don't accept that. This is disgusting. A good woman like you don't fit here. 
this is a, this is not a religion for you Sarah what okay. kind of a prophet you would do that do you hear me now so I invite you Sarah to leave this cult this is this is not a good this is not a religion this is a, this is a scam this is a sex uh, monster this is a guy who want to take advantage of you You want, did you decide to leave Islam, Sarah, or not yet? Did you decide to leave Islam? Say yes. Leave this cult. This is satanic. It's obvious. Go and follow the holy Jesus, the holy name. Follow the holy Christ who never, never, never commit a sin. Why in the world do you want to follow such a man and you ignore the best of the best, the Messiah, the Messiah, the best of everyone? There's no one like him. Why you want to follow a man like this? What kind of a man? This guy is not even qualified to work a gardener for you. You don't even trust him to be in your house. Your husband will not even trust him to be alone with you. He was known as trustworthy. Say again, what? Say again, what? He was known as an Amin. What I mean? This is Amin. Did you hear the story of your prophet? He went to his own son and he flirted with the wife when she's married to him. What I mean, I mean, mean trustworthy. Muhammad, he went to Zainab. He went to Zainab. Listen, what what I mean? Muhammad, he went to Zainab when the husband was not there, and he flirted with Zainab, and he said to her, "Praise be to Allah, the the, the one who made my heart flip flip for you." This is trustworthy. What can trustworthy? Imagine I go to visit you, and I'm your I am your father-in-law, and then when I see you, I flirt with you, and then you tell your husband, and then I take you from your husband, and then I sleep with you. This is the trustworthy. Take care, Sarah. Take care. Take care. Muhammad is trustworthy. If this is trustworthy, what trust garbage is? <coughs> hey, stay Shadi. How are you? You want to call me? By the way, Shadi, in Iraq, Shadi means a monkey. I don't know what you mean by calling yourself monkey. I am making up stories. I show it in the screen. Everybody see that whatever I speak of, I show it in the screen. I never say something without proof. Challenge me. Do you speak Arabic? And she saw it and she read it. Who's next? Who is next? Who want to prove to me that Muhammad is anything to be even qualified to work in the post office? Muhammad is not qualified to work in the post office because we cannot trust him to deliver the letters. He will open them. He will stay what is inside, especially if it's pictures for women. If you work for Amazon, there is no delivery for lingerie ever will arrive to any woman in the world. He will open the boxes. He will sniff the panties and he will keep them at home. Who's next? I am the Christian Prince and none of you Muslims dare to debate me. You see, I was speaking to this girl, very nice, very kind, and I'm going down to her level. Show me that you can do better. Who is a Muslim can do better? Why liar? Why liar? Here we go. Let me show you. You are saying to me I'm liar? Your prophet was accused by you, Muslim, that he stole an underwear. Do you want to show you that, Shadi? Let me show you. Here we go. Guys, he's saying I'm a liar. You tell me if Muhammad was stealing underwear, according to the Quran, he was stealing it for what? To wear it or to, to sniff it? The underwear was red. Let's read together. <clears throat> and even the chapter number is a miracle. Chapter 3, verse number. 161 let us go to the interpretation I'm lying right okay let us see <coughs> okay
Read with me and laugh. Let us see who is lying. And as you see, those are your Islamic books, not mine. Your prophet was an underwear thief. And now you tell me he was doing what with it? Hmm? You tell me. Here we go. When some red velvet cloth went missing in the day of Badr, some people began to say, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps the prophet took it. Do you see it? The Muslims are fighting over what they stole. This is already a theft. The attack of Badr is the Muslims attacking people, attacking caravan, attacking money of people. They are thieves. And now they are fighting over a piece of a clothing, which is a bikini. Do you see a trustworthy? And then what happened? Allah, he sent the verse says, no way. It's not Muhammad. No way. Okay, hold on. If you are God, why you don't tell us who is the one who took it I mean look at this God he sent the message saying it's not Muhammad who stole the underwear what about you tell us who took it until now the underwear is missing until now if you go to the website of the police of Saudi Arabia they have a big prize for the one who will find the underwear which Muhammad was accused to steal Any Muslim can tell me where we can find this piece of a cloth, which Allah Himself now is busy. God, the one who created the galaxies, He sent the verse about the underwear. I mean, are you serious? God, who created this amazing, massive space and galaxies and star, the earth is not even a dust. He sent His word, His priceless words to defend. A man was accused of a stain underwear. That's amazing. Any Muslim? Look like a Muslim when I make me ta take shahada. Let's see what this is about. <coughs> take shahada, you're right. Potatoes. Any Abdul? <laughs> Hello. Yes. This is Gigi. How are you? Hey, Gigi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm good. Listen, I don't want to debate you because uh -huh. I'm not a debater. But you are and a Muslim, right? You are a Muslim, right? Uh, oh, la la. I'm talking. Let me just finish what I'm telling you. Oh, la la. Okay. Uh, la la means no. You know that now. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm not a debater and I'm not going to debate you. What you would debate I, me I'm about not. if you aren't a Muslim? But, you, I have nothing to debate but, with you. Yeah. La la. Uh, let me talk. Uh -huh. Let me talk. Uh huh. But my friend, mm -hmm. who is a very knowledgeable Muslim, mm -hmm. who who can debate you sitting in a car with nothing, wants to debate you, and you refuse to do that on Facebook Live. I don't understand why 
what you Facebook? can't debate I don't, anywhere. I, I, don't, I don't do I don't do broadcast on Facebook. I do it here. All my people listening are here. Why he don't come here? Why don't call me in Skype? Well, he don't. He do not need to go anywhere. What about call me in Skype? He can he can do live in Skype in in, in, in YouTube in, in in Facebook. He can do it Skype in, in Facebook. But the reason the reason why you don't want to do that is because you don't want to leave your stuff. Your what, copy and paste stuff? and all like this. What stuff? What copy? You, I, I have to show my reference also, on the screen. Me, hold on, hold this. on. I have to show my the reference. Guy, is, it about, is it about listen. talking or about proving? Is it about talking or proving? I have to show the reference the on the screen. That, why don't you show your is face? Facebook? Is you fa your hold face? on. Is Facebook is internet or it's not? I thought you were. I thought you weren't rude. You are I, rude. I was, you are rude. You are not, saying to, you are accusing me. I, I cannot leave my place. Who are you? What do you know about me? What what place? What place? Do you want me to sit okay. with him in his car? Why want to go to his car? Is do we have a date? I didn't say go to his car. So where I will go? Where, where I will go? Being, see, where, you where don't I will go? Where I will about, go? So where I will go to debate him? Where, tell me where good. where I will go you to debate. Oh where DJ Gigi, where I will go to debate him. <laughs> Tell me where I will go to debate him. Go ahead. You can go. You you have a page on Facebook and filled with lies and rude and crazy stuff about Islam. I'm a Christian before. Yeah. I know. Listen, listen, I know listen. What you're doing. Let, us, let us prove who is the liar. Prove to me one lie I said in Facebook. Go ahead. Prove to you. I don't have to prove anything. You have to prove it right because when now. you say somebody is lying, you have You're to prove him a liar. Aren't you the one saying to me that there's a I guy said, who can get I me busted? Said, listen, listen, listen. You both of you, both of you are a piece of garbage because if you are a truthful in what you are See, saying, what I'm talking about. You are, now yes, you are a piece of garbage. of garbage because if you are not, you will not accuse me of lies, but you cannot prove it. When you accuse somebody you're of lies, when you accuse, I don't respect you. I don't. Like I don't that. respect you. Get lost. Get lost. I don't respect you when you cannot prove me. To be a liar when you say to somebody you are a liar and I say to you show me one lie I said you said I don't have to prove it that's because you are a scumbag how stupid are you I want you to prove that we lie in Facebook go ahead I'm listening Are you there? Hello? <laughs> Let's go. <coughs> when you have better internet, call me. Who is a Muslim you have the courage to call me? Here we go. I just received a message from a person who decided to leave Islam. I will not show all his name. I will show a part of his message. I don't even have him in my list. Here we go. Do you see it? People are leaving Islam for a very simple reason. It's a garbage. When a Muslim he says to me, "You are posting lies," and then he don't dare to call me to show me the lies. Obviously, everybody knows who is the liar. Muslims are leaving by thousands, thousands Islam because of my videos, and this is why you are so angry and so upset. You say he's lying, but you cannot show where is my lies. Then who is the liar? Who is next? Who want to leave Islam? <coughs> hmm? Who is next? Who is a Muslim want to call me and show me that I am lying? Right? Look, this guy, he's saying the stone is not worship. We kiss the stone to what? Let, hold on, hold on. We kiss the stone because Muhammad, B, 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 U, H, they did. 
I mean look how stupid the answer is guys when I say every Muslim is a stupid until he proved the opposite I am not insulting here we go we kiss the stone because Muhammad B B B U H he kiss it okay why he kiss it why he kiss it hello hello yes uh, hello CP yes my friend I hear you uh, I was uh, talking to you earlier about uh... <laughs> What's it called? The uh, justification for things done in the past, like whether in the Quran or the Bible. Yeah, but and, this, is, this, uh, this is not the time. I want, I want, to, I want to take uh, a Muslim cause. They are trying to call me. Please go ahead. Don't call me for now. Let us see what the Muslims want to say. Oh, this is Gigi. Hey, Gigi, how are you? <laughs> so, did you find the lies I post in Facebook, or you did not find one? Okay, listen one second before we before you go any further. Hmm. You, you apologize to me for calling me garbage. I'm not garbage. I didn't say you were garbage. You said I'm lying. I, you said I'm lying. I, this is lies are being told about. Okay, I did listen. Not say when when somebody when you said somebody that did lie, he told I am the one who told those lies supposedly. So you are accusing me to be a Can liar. I so garbage? prove you it. Know, you, Prove it, that. prove it. Otherwise, this is garbage. Prove it that I did lie. Show me one lie. Go you ahead. Said, you said, I'm you listening. Said I'm I am listening. I am listening. Show me one lie. I said, go ahead. I don't talk with somebody that disrespects me and calls me garbage. You are the I one who accused me to be a liar. You are disrespecting me. Now you have to prove me to be a liar. Said, Otherwise, you I are not a decent woman. Saying on Facebook about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is lies. And you know they're Show lies. Show me one. Show me one. Which one? Tons of it in which there. one? Tons give me one, give me one. Just prove me, uh, get me busted in front of everybody. Let's, I have I have 800 people listening to me right now. Show me no, one I'm lie. Gonna... Show me, lady, if you are truthful. No. If I, I you see, you want me, you want me to treat you with respect, correct? Okay, treat me with respect. I treat you with respect. Show me one lie. Let us talk about a uh, civil people. Show me one lie. Get me busted. Everybody is watching. Go ahead. All right, you can put on your showboat and stuff that doesn't work with me or your 800 viewers. I'm just telling you, you I are just telling you. me nothing because you cannot show me one lie. Why you are saying I am posting lies, but yet you cannot point your finger at one. What's wrong with you? Something wrong with you. Other, other, otherwise, either you are lying or I'm lying. So why you don't show? I am showing you. I'm, I'm giving you opportunity in front of 800 people to show them that I am a liar. Name for me one lie. <laughs> Listen to how he's running, everybody. 800 people out there listening to him he refuses to come on facebook and debate and i am in facebook you idiot are you a donkey or what because i post in facebook each time i go live so if your friend is a man he can call me in skype what the difference between facebook and here as long you can call me why he cannot call me as long you can call me and you are a stupid woman who do not know anything about islam why he don't dare to call me if he is knowledgeable if you are if you are the stupid one yet you can call me and you know how to use skype and you know how to use facebook why your stupid boyfriend? Why your stupid boyfriend? He don't call me. What's wrong with him? Boyfriend, he's a brother of mine. What a brother? brother? There's no brother in Islam. There's no brother. The, a, a woman and man in Islam. Muhammad he said, if women and male and female they are together, that the third is the devil. Do you agree or not? Sick. You have a sick mind. You are the God. sick. You're a prophet. He said. You're a prophet. He said. Any woman she wanna give her pen to the prophet, she get. He have to give it to him right away. Do you agree or not? Really. Yes, really. Yes, really. I can't believe you have one person that listens to you. I, I, I have right not, now. I have. I have. Not, I have right now. Seven hundred seventy-five people. You believe it or not? Seventy-five people that just heard you. Seven hundred seventy-five people, and you cannot show them one lie. I said, can you show them one lie? Refuse to come on Facebook. I am. Not, I am not refusing. I am in Facebook already. You donkey. I am in Facebook. I am in Facebook. I post my video in Facebook, which means he can call me here. Doesn't matter where I am. This is internet. You are. You are a coward like him. Your your boyfriend don't have a panty. Maybe you have one, but he don't have a panty. If you have a panty, let him call me. He is a coward. You said I am lying, yet you cannot show me one lie because both of you are a scam. Get lost and never call me here. Let the, let the man of the house call me. That is your your boyfriend. Let the rooster. Let the rooster call me. What a potato. Christian Prince, you post lies in Facebook, Christian Prince. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the lie I posted in Facebook? Can you show me one? I'm not going to debate you, a Christian Prince. You know, by the way, I might convert to Islam, and you might be one of my uh, 
four roommates. You must be stupid to believe in Islam. How a woman she can even accept Islam for a second unless she is really mentally ill. How a woman she can agree that a man he can beat her as if she is a goat unless she is mentally ill. This is your Quran. Let us see what Islam says about you. You women who is a Muslim. Chapter 4, verse number 34. Christian Prince, you are lying. Christian Prince, I show in the screen everything I say. Prove me wrong. And this is your books and those your websites. You are lying. Christian Prince, I'm going to hit you with my bra. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. This is your Islamic books. This is how stupid the Quran is, and this is how filthy this book is. Do you see it? Scourge them. If you suspect that your wife, she might be in a stage of going to be disobedient, she is not even disobedient yet. You jail them in their rooms. You scream at them and you scourge them. But don't be exaggerating. How we can scourge our women? The hadith explained that. Muhammad in the hadith, he said, beat them until you make their skin greener than their clothes. This is accepted in Islam. And let us prove that. Liar, huh? My boyfriend. He is very knowledgeable. <laughs> oh boy. Let's spread all the women looking 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 for a man. That's why she convert. Read with me. This is a woman, this is a story of a Muslim woman because the filthy rules of Muhammad, who made an order that if a female woman she has divorced three times from her husband, she cannot get back to her husband, Rifa unless she sleep and have intercourse with other men and not only that she have to taste his orgasm and he have to taste her orgasm rafa divorced his wife were upon abdul rahman bin Az 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 zubair al qurazi married her so this is a woman she used to be married to a guy his name is rafa now she is married to a man his name is abdul rahman what happened I just said that a lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her uh, uh, of her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. It was the habit of ladies to support each other. You see, they are saying to you, she is not supporting her because she's right. No, she's supporting her because there are women supporting each other. So when Allah Messenger came, Aisha said, I have not seen any suffering women suffer, suffer, uh, women suffering as much as a believing woman. So Aisha here confirmed that a Muslim woman, she is the worst in life. She have no good life she is suffering the worst who is witnessing for that aisha she's witnessing that between all, between all the women of the arab no woman is suffering as much as a believing woman look look at her skin her skin is a greener than her clothes her skin this is not they say to us you beat her light beating right look at this this is light beating her skin is a greener than her clothes when abdul rahman he heard that his wife had gone to the prophet he came with his two sons from other wife and she said by allah i have done no wrong to him he is impotent and he is useless to me like this which means his penis is not working look how filthy the society look how disgusting those people are holding showing the 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 the, the fringe of her garment abdu abu abdul rahman said by allah by allah oh messenger of allah she showed she told the lie and very very strong i can satisfy her what is enough what is next maybe he's going to hold his private part and he will do it live and very strong i can satisfy her but she is disobedient and she want to go back to rifa aha now we know what's happening this woman she married this man because the filthy muhammad the mad muhammad the crazy muhammad he made a rule that if a woman she divorced her husband or a man divorced her his wife sorry three times she cannot get back to him unless she marry a new husband and he f her and he tastes her juice and she tastes his juice which is orgasm and then and only then she can go back to the husband 
so now this woman she married this new man but she don't want to sleep with him she want him to get back as a tool to get back to the previous husband so look what happened Allah messenger said to her if that is <coughs> your intention <coughs> then know that is unlawful for you to remarry Rafa unless unless Abdul Rahman he tastes your juice you see in the translation they say until he has sexual relationship what kind of religion making a rule that a woman she cannot go back to her husband unless she goes deep with the new man and that man he have to test her orgasm and she have to test his orgasm until he tastes your orgasm this is a prophet of God and not only that the man he did beat the hell of his wife and then Muhammad he sponsor him by beating your wife it's lawful for you did Muhammad say why you beat your wife no he was against the women and he judged for the for the for, for the man that he's right he said to her if you are if this is your attention you should know it's not lawful for you and as you see Muhammad is taking the side of the man perfectly so we beat the women we make her skin green or then her clothes and yet they say to me you are lying where is my lies I'm showing you everything I say and this is the reference prove me wrong why you don't put the information in context as <coughs> Sarah she is saying that okay Sarah <coughs> let's see what Sarah was saying of his wife and then Muhammad he sponsored him. hello yes Sarah you said I am not putting things in context what does that mean oh my everything has a context like the okay what is the context that I can beat my wife until I make her skin green and her clothes and then I say that you have to sleep with a new husband so you can go back to the old husband go ahead um when I see in context, I'm talking about historical context, right? Well, so this is this is a historic the story in front of us as it is. I, re I read the whole story, I did not even cut a letter from it. Right. So you do know that with Islam came the revolution of, of everything. Like what? Women quickly gained rights and in inheritance in that's in false, that's false, every, that's after, false, that's false, that's false, that's false. Women is before Islam they inherit everything. Not only that, they used to be very rich. As an example, Muhammad himself he used to work for Khadija. Is that true? Yeah, but she was a widow, right? She is a widow, which means she inherited her husband. Is that correct? She inherited everything from her husband. Yes. So, so this is she, she was not a she was not a Muslim woman. Is that correct? I guess. Okay. So, so women right? they have their right, and not only that, she was the boss of Muhammad. Is that correct? Right. Okay. So she think? so she have right, and she is a businesswoman. She have an inheritance. She uh, she is independent. She is the boss. What is next? Islam make the women wear a veil. Became inside the box. And you are the one who said to me when you called me first time. You said that the wives of the prophet they have no right to go around. They have to stay home. Didn't you say that to me? But before Islam, women she was a queen. Women she was a leader. Women she was a counselor. Women she was a, a, a businesswoman. As an example, Khadija herself. So Islam destroy you and make you just a sex toy. Where is your what is your what is your proof? You, you are the one who just told me before that the wife of the prophet they have to stay home. No, no, no. your proof that you know Arabia was you know this kind of. What do you mean? You never heard of the queens on in 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 in, in Arabia and other country around? Who is Cleopatra? Who is who is Zenobia? Who is who who is who is Khadija? Is it Khadija? She was a businesswoman before Islam. What's all what's wrong with you? Who is Umu Qurfa? Who is who, who, who is you know, there's there is many famous women in the history of Arabia What are you talking about? There's many queens. So those are w women, you know Even even the Quran speak about Suleiman flying all the way from Jerusalem over the flying carpet to see the Queen of Sheba The Queen of Sheba not the King of Sheba. So after Islam, where is the Queen of Sheba? What happened to Yemen since when Yemen when the last time Yemen have a queen? Isn't it your prophet? He said that a woman she lead her nation. They will never be successful Which means it's forbidden for women to be a leader in Islam 
Okay, so what I'm talking about is from a legal perspective, right? So legal, legal. Yeah, you, you say to me that Islam yeah, gave the women a right. Islam took all the right from women. Islam made the women a sex toy. As you see here, Muhammad is forcing the women to sleep with the man. She don't want him. Obviously, this is rape. The women, she don't want to sleep with the man. The man is beating her to force her to sleep with him. Muhammad, he took the side of the man over the women and he is forcing her to sleep with the man. Where's the right? Yeah, but you're talking about hadith, right? So what I'm saying doesn't matter. Hadith is your prophet words. All right. So what I'm saying, from my knowledge, right? I know that Arabia was very oppressive to women. So women would. That's a lie, my friend. That's a lie. That's a lie. Here we go. Look at the Arab Christians. Are they oppressed to women? We don't have Islam. We don't believe in Islam. Are we oppressed to women? That's a big fat lie. If the Arab are oppressed to women, we are Arab Christians. Show me how the Arab Christian they oppress their wives. Okay, so does the Bible in the Bible does it have any um, inheritance laws for women? Sure, the women she inherit. Yes, the women she inherit in the Bible. In Islam, the, the, the women in Islam, women one one man equal to two women, correct? No, no, no. So in Islam, in Islam, the women is equal to two. The man is equal to two women, even in the witnessing in the court. Is that correct? No. What do you mean now? It's not correct. Oh boy. So women and men are equal <laughs> in, in goodness in, in front of God's in front of Allah's eyes, they are equal. However, men are given daraja, meaning that they have a step above women. Lady, I don't know I what's wrong. What's, what's I don't know what are, are you talking about? Here we go. Let us see. Let us see. You said no, right? You said women they don't have half have uh, right as as uh, as the men. Let us see. Hmm. Let us see. <coughs> can you can you put the TV down, please? Okay. All right. All right. Let us go to the Quran. And see uh, what the Quran says about women. You said it's not true that women she don't inherit equal to the man. I don't know what kind of Islam you are learning, but obviously you have nothing. You know, you have no idea what are you talking about. <coughs> if we go in, in the Quran, <coughs> we will find the following. Chapter uh, chapter four, verse number eleven. Do you see the verse? Yeah. Okay. Does it say that one male is equal to two females? In terms of inheritance, yeah. Hmm. So why you said no? With the male, what is equal to the share of two females? Hmm. But if there are only daughters, two or more? Hmm. So, yes, a woman in that um, century. Hmm. But you said no. But you said no. You said no. You said no. I told you that the one man, he inherited equal to two women. You said no. This is from an economical perspective. Right? What so, economical perspective? Uh, this is this is how it is. Well, this is how this is. The inheritance is about economy. It's about money. It's about property. What are you talking about? Same time. The Quran here he said a stupid thing. It says if two females, you know, if, there, if one man is equal to two females, all right. Now, and he's talking about two females. If two, if if if, if male is uh, you know equal to two females, and then he says to you, let me show you in Arabic so you can get get a better understanding. It says, فَإِن كُنَّ نِسَاءً فَوْقَ إثْنَتَيْنِ فَلَهُنَّ ثُلْثَ مَا تَرَكْ If they are more than two. They have the third of what what the parent left. I mean, this is a crazy because yeah, this, I'm, because I'm this is impossible mathematically. This is impossible. I will give you an example. If I have I have if I have one thousand dollar, if I have one thousand dollar, and I have one male and five females. How we can divide the one thousand dollar between? The one male and two female and, and five females. Okay, so 
okay, so what I'm saying, right, when you're mm. putting things into context, you should mention, you know, how Arabia was. Well, how Arabia was. You said to me that, you see, you, you, you swallow your word. A second ago, you said to me, this is not a true, and now it's a true. Same time, as you see, the woman, she is not allowed to eat, to be equal uh, inheritance to the man. But before, okay. the woman, she can. And now, not only that, the woman, she is not allowed to witness in the court. She can witness only in the case of writing. Is that correct? Is this in the Quran? This is in the Quran, yeah. All right, so from my so, knowledge... Right? So why the women, she cannot witness in the court in the case of murder? You tell me, why? <clears throat> what is the wisdom? Where, why? Is that, where, is it, where is that in the Quran? Well, the, Quran, well, well, the Quran make it clear that women they can witness only in the case of borrowing money as simple as that And the funny you know the Muslim they say to me I never heard this before they, you know I, each time I say something to them they told me I never heard this before yeah you etc and it says here Go down. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ رَجُلَيْنَ فَرَجُلٌ وَإِمْرَأَتَانِ مِمَّا تَرْتَضُونَ Read it. Only in the case of money borrowing, a woman, she can be a witness, and two women equal to one man. As simple yeah. as that. Okay, so <clears throat> when we're looking at it from that society's perspective, it was a you huge... You keep saying record. it from that society perspective. Why so women, she cannot be a witness in the court? Can Why only in the case of money only? What if a woman she saw a crime? What if one million women they saw a man murdering a man? Why we cannot give them the right to be witnesses? Can I finish? Go ahead. Okay, so <clears throat> from in that like in that, in that era, hmm. this was considered like a, a feminist revolution. Women were legally allowed to inherit property. They got rights that they Lady, did not have. women, they were allowed to inherit full legally before Islam. Islam make it partly inheritance, not right. fully. Okay, so where is the revolution here? I'm talking about Arabia. Okay. I'm talking about Arabia too. Isn't it Khadija? You are the one who just said to me that Khadija, she inherited the full money of her husbands. Okay, so then tell me what government did Lady, they have? Just go, just go, just go. I, I, you know. Unbelievable and people they say to me you have no patient And people they say to me you have no patient I mean it's stupidity Stupidity today is look like the the mindset of everybody everybody chose to be stupid We say to her that women they used to be queens. We have the queen of Sheba. We have the Nubia We have Cleopatra. We have Khadija the boss of Muhammad and then she said to me we have to look in the story in perspective at that time. We are talking about time and we are talking before that time. Women, they used to be queen, even in the time of Muhammad, the daughter of the Caesar, the, 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 the Shah of Iran. She became the king. During the life of Muhammad, the daughter of the king of Iran, he passed away, the king of the Persian, the, the emperor, the emperor of the Persian. Which means the emperor now is a woman. What happened to women in Iran since Islam came to Iran? They keep saying a lie and they repeat the lie and then they believe the lie. But the lie is a lie. Where is the queen of Islam today? Where is the queen of Saudi Arabia? Where is Khadija in Saudi Arabia? You put the women inside the burqa and she cannot walk alone. She cannot drive alone. Just last year, the crown prince, he allowed women after 100, 200 years of, of, of discovering the car that she can drive. Women driving 100 years ago, 100 years after, in Saudi Arabia, say, okay, let them drive. And not only that, the woman, she is not allowed to drive unless she get a permission from her husband or her father, which means still she will not get drive anyway. Until now, 
you don't have the right to drive until now you don't have the right to walk alone until now you don't have a right to be anything <laughs> how a human being can be stupid like this If the if the Islamic cult respect you will not even allow the man to have four of you Four of you why you are a goat Well, why you want to have four What four can do one cannot do So I will go to my bedroom and I will have a, 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 a sex party four women There's no love in Islam. There's no family in Islam. There is only you know breathing it's like rabbits have more kids he wanted to have more kids so he can spread Islam that's all this is the plan he want to have more kids so he can make them fighters and go and kill them <clears throat> who want to leave Islam Who want to leave us now? Yeah, Fintin, how are you? Make some, uh, some. I did not drink coffee or tea for two days, three days now uh, because my throat is dry, so I'm staying away from it. <coughs> I'm talking too much, but I can do too much garbage, and I'm the only one who can clean it. Somebody have to green, somebody have to clean the garbage of the town. How many broadcasts I did today? One early morning, one now. Be, be, at the end of the night yesterday, I made one. Two, a few hours before, I made one. A few hours before, I made one. A few hours made. Few, I mean, if you see how many, you know, you see those who they are fighting Islam supposedly, they make for you a video, fifteen minutes a week, and then they go sleep for the next uh, two weeks. <clears throat> And then they accuse you that you are lying when we are showing everything and look look at this the stupid woman she said to me why you don't come to, to facebook what i will do in facebook what do you mean facebook why i want to go to facebook i post in facebook that i am live on on, on youtube why i have to be in 10, 20 places and if the guy want to talk to me talk to me here call me in skype how come you can call me he cannot call me Gigi, she is Gigi. She's looking for a husband. They are willing to sell their soul for any man in the bed. If you get old and nobody want to marry you, what do you do? Convert to Islam. Abdul will marry you to get a green card from you and then he get rid of you as soon as he get his green card. And then he go to the Middle East and he get a brand new wife and she is six years old. That is the story. And that is the truth. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> any Muslim would like to call me? Anyone don't forget guys to subscribe and invite your friends tell them about what we do here and If you like to learn more you can go to amazon.com and you or amazon.de the event in your country and you have we have a collection of my books According to many people they say to me after they get my book They could not put it down from their hand because my English was not good at the you know when they said that to me I thought they are talking about there's a problem in the glue but later I discovered this is not the point. They were trying to say to me that your book is so wonderful to the point we could not put it down. So the glue is fine. Feel free to order my books. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Takbir. <clears throat> and by the way, the most of people who read my books are Muslims. You believe it or not, including Shabir Ali. Shabir Ali, 
the potato he agreed to debate with me and then he purchased my book after he bought my book he decided and he sent a message to the ABN TV saying to them I am busy right now with my BSD and since then he is busy I mean things happen things happen for a reason put yourself in the shoes of Shabir Ali what you would do you will be busy forever Muslims are fighting over to debate David Wood Christian Prince cannot find anyone who claimed to be a scholar to debate him why because they want to make fun of you because you don't speak Arabic so someone like hijab will say to David Wood I know this is coming I know you do not know Hebrew you do not know Arabic I will give you a free lesson in Arabic today I know I know this is coming <laughs> I know this is coming. Hello? <coughs> yes, go ahead. I'm calling all the way from the ninja and I want to ask. So, know, sorry, about... sorry, lady, I cannot understand anything. Say again. Well, I'm calling from Indonesia. All right. I'm, I'm an ex Muslim, and but my family is still Muslim. And I, I really want to tell them. About this, this call and everything about Islam, but they're still ignorant anyway. But I want to ask you about your book. Is it available in in uh, Indonesian in Bahasa? Um, as I know, like now, now we have a we have a new translation for the deception of Allah in the Malay language. I don't know if that is uh, is something you can read with. The language oh, of, of okay. Malaysia is that is you can you can read that book? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this book will be published soon. I'm working on it. It's already translated. Uh, uh, we are making it ready, and I hope soon we will have it published. So you will be able to at least you can order the Kindle version of it, because I'm sure maybe uh, the paper uh, book will not be able to be published um, there. Okay. Yeah. So good news. I'm happy for you. I'm happy that a lot of people from Indonesia are leaving Islam. And I know that there is a huge number of people from Indonesia. They watch my videos and share my videos. I know that. Yes, yes, it's true. All right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm happy to teach them. And maybe you can help. Uh, maybe you can add subtitle to my videos, by the way, if you want to help. Uh, you can add subtitle. You can download them. Make a channel, but nobody knows that this is you. Make it a private, I mean. Okay. And, sh and share it around. I, I, I... I yeah, and you can make a subtitle where people they can read in your own language because I know that not everybody speak English Yeah, yeah, it's true All right, my dear sister. I'm so happy for you and now you became a Christian, right? Yes, yes. that's wonderful. I mean to that. I'm so happy what we you know what, what is like uh, You know from the people around you like do you see a lot a lot of uh, Muslims leaving Islam and coming to Christ in Indonesia? Yes, that's wonderful. Uh, all of my friends they are living one and then uh, next week they are going to baptize that's wonderful my sister i'm so happy to hear that and i i hope and i wish one day i will be able to go to indonesia and meet the great ones like you uh and you know already i many brothers they spoke to me and uh, you know they invite me to go there and it's really my dream to go there i i, I, I will work for that yeah all right sister thank you very much for calling Thank you for sending. Take care. Bye bye. God bless. Bye. All right. See, this is what is good about what we do. And this is why the Muslims are so upset. If I go right now in YouTube, you will find that number two country in the world watching my videos is Indonesia, which is the largest Islamic country. And Muslims are leaving Islam left and right. You know the Soviet Union? The Soviet Union, not long ago, it was huge and scary. The second you say Soviet Union, you speak about something horrifying. Communist, blood, killing. Millions of people are killed. Powerful country, huge country. Overnight, the Soviet Union is gone. 
This is what will happen to Islam. Actually, it's happening as we speak. They try to fool you to say Islam is the fastest growing religion, but this is the propaganda which is false. Because when somebody convert to Islam, he make a thousand video of him. When somebody leave Islam, he don't make even one video. For this is a terrorist religion. <clears throat> yes, my friend. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you, CP? I'm fine. Go ahead. Uh, I see you talking, and uh, I'm kind of curious. Like, what's your problem with with Islam? Like, what's my problem? Yeah, I think you are the one who have a problem with Islam. Me? Yeah. What makes you say that? Because you just say to me, "Assalamu alaikum." Yeah, "Assalamu alaikum" means peace be upon you. Yeah, but this is not allowed in Islam to say to non-Muslims, "Assalamu alaikum." Uh, who said that? Your prophet. Really? Yeah. I don't believe that. Well, <clears throat> here we go. This is why I'm saying you don't. You know, you have a problem with Islam because you you believe in your own version of Islam. <clears throat> Well, like, what makes you say that? Like, I, I've never saw any hadith that says that you can't say, like, Assalamu alaikum to non Muslims. I am Christian. Like, you know, we treat them with respect. Actually, like, I'm in Egypt, and, like, the Christians here, like, you know, we have churches and all, and, like, they're allowed to practice their religion. And stuff My friend, like that. they are not al they are allowed to practice. This is their country. Thank you very much to say they are allowed. This is their country. You are a guest. You took their country and you are allowed them to, to, to practice their religion in their country. I mean, you see how nice you are. This is their country. I'm not saying it. Okay, I'm not no, saying I'm, it like I'm, that. I'm, I'm saying, the, I'm saying this, that. No, I, I know what you are saying. No, like no. Us, so don't tell me you are doing brothers. a favor at the same time, my friend. Same time. Do you do you know there is an area in your country is called Damanhur? Damanhur, yes. Hmm. Do you know why they call it Damanhur? Why? Because the Muslim they slaughtered the Christians to the point the river became. A river of blood well if that happened then I really I don't I don't approve of that okay. it's really wrong and no, even no. if they're Muslims I'm not gonna defend them okay this That's is really this wrong. is your prophet read with me the hadith I will show it to you in the screen okay <coughs> my name is Muhammad by the way I know Muhammad you are welcome anyway I'm not being Thank harsh you. on you because your name is Muhammad I'm, I'm just harsh with the truth that's all don't greet the Jews and the Christians before they greet you and when you meet them meet one of them in the road force them towards him in the nor narrowest alley uh, or alley in the road do you see it uh wait I don't see the video it's not activated for me okay well let me show you <clears throat> what about now Uh, it's not showing. Maybe I should click on the video icon on for me, but I'm worried that it will open mine. You are watching YouTube, right? I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm showing you on YouTube, not in Skype. <clears throat> ah, okay, wait, hold on. Okay. Yeah, I see it. All right. Why your prophet? He is nice to the point. Says to you, don't say assalamu alaikum to Christian prince. You say to me assalamu alaikum, and this is why I say to you, look like you have a problem with Islam, not me. Well, maybe like I don't approve. Like maybe the hadith is like maybe the Christians and Jews back then they they were evil or something. My friend, he didn't know. say back then. Back then, by what, what evil? The, the the Christian and the Jews they give protection to Muhammad. Muhammad he went to the Ethiopian, they gave him asylum. He went to Yathrib, the Jews gave him asylum. Muhammad he married from Khadija, correct? Yeah. So how how he allow you to marry from them, but they are evil. Muhammad is being evil. Right. And look what he's saying. He's he, he's saying to you, don't proceed the Jews and the Christian with salam. Don't say salam. And not only that, when you see a Christian, force him to walk in the sewage. Do you know what it says? Uh, force them to uh, You speak Arabic, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what is? Uh, the narrowest. What does that mean? Uh, the sewage. In the old days, there was a sewage in the side of the road where the dirty water go. So if you are walking in the road and I am walking in the road, I have to jump in the sewage and you stay in the normal road because I am a Christian, you are a Muslim. 
and this is why Egypt now majority became Muslims because there is many Christian they could not handle it uh, that's really wrong this is my this is your religion my friend and you agree with me this is wrong so you are saying that Muhammad is a bad person don't you oh uh, yeah if this is if this hadith is true because like the hadith were written 200 years after is well, that this is true my friend here we go and this is sahih read with me it says sahih do you see the refer reference sahih yeah okay so i advise you you know you sound like a a decent man a good man from a good family and you don't fit in this religion i advise you to leave islam right now as we speak uh well, like, I don't know, like, um, <coughs> come on, you are, like, you see, I can tell, I can tell you are coming from a good family. I can tell that you have a wonderful parents. I can tell that your mother and your father, they are not a bad quality. And I can tell that you are good of their good. So why a good man like you will stay in a cult like this? You just admit and you agree that this is wrong. Why you want to stay in the wrong? Uh, it's not it's not that I want to stay in the wrong It's because like uh, I feel like all religions they have something bad in them that that like you're not really supposed to accept like like you can reject the my bad friend, and take no, no no my friend let me tell you something either you accept it all or you reject it all you cannot accept some because supposedly this is all from God either all of it is good because bad religion have bad and good it's mean it's it's garbage this is not God that's it as simple as that yeah, but like I, I researched Christianity as well. I, I, I read about the Old Testament and how Yahweh, when he said kill, like when he ordered the, to kill the Malachites to kill all of them, the women, children. So I like my friend, like if somebody if somebody saw a dream, saw a vision, did he kill them? I mean, I saw a dream that yesterday all the whole world is destroyed. I mean, come on, let us read things in context and read it and, and see what happened. They did not kill and nobody die and it you know this is I saw a vision I will tell you I will tell you my vision and those people they were killing them too those my enemy they hate me to death I saw a dream I saw a vision so we can you know if you want to be honest be honest you had you admit this is this is you know let us say let us say the Jews they were bad let us say the Old Testament for you it, it's not what you like me as a person I judge everything by the fruit the fruit of my god is wonderful my god he gave life he take life but in the same time you would not see my god being unjust and being unfair because even the children who die even if they are the children of the non-believers those they go to heaven this is what the bible teach if a child he is a child of a muslim he die he go to heaven if a child is a child of a buddha he go he die he go to heaven if a child is a child of an atheist he die he die go to heaven this is what the christianity teach so even if they are war and there's children they die still those children they will go to heaven and life in earth is not really important because there's even something better for those who will go there same time you will see that my lord jesus the christ he did not say when you see a muslim in the street spit in his face curse him and make him walk in the sewage he says love your enemy bless those who curse you so for you, you are reading the history of the Jew and the Jew, they suffer a lot. The Jews, they've been taken as a slave, the whole nation twice for hundreds of years. So you have to take in your consideration that we are talking about thousands of years ago. Yet we have Jesus who said, love your enemy. This is the same God. This is the same teaching. This is the same message, which means it is about love. But in the same time, God have to be justice with you. You have to survive. If there is a criminal is going to come to kill you. If there is somebody you now, God forbid somebody into your house and he want to rape your wife. What do you do? If you have only one of two choices, either you kill him or let him rape your wife. What you would do? You will kill him. Yeah. Muhammad was a rapist. He said, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls. It's not the Roman. He said, attack Muhammad and get the, the Arab girls. The Muslim, they say to us, do you know the crusade? The crusade happened after the Muslims attack for 600 years since Jesus until Muhammad. We never heard of a crusade and you have to agree. The crusade happened after the Muslims attack our land, rape our women, force the jizya and stole our money and destroy our churches. And your country is one yeah. of the 
what your country is one of the occupied country your grand 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 grandfather used to be Christian the Arab came to your country they forced you to speak Arabic and they forced you to say you are an Arab and now you think you are an Arab when the fact you are an Egyptian yeah Khaled bin al-Walid he opened Egypt when it was Coptic at first no not Khaled bin al-Walid it's Amr ibn al-As Amr ibn Amr ibn al-As is a whore Amr ibn al-As do you know what happened with Amr ibn al-As when he fought with Ali no when Amr ibn al-As he fought with Ali Ali almost killed him no, actually, uh, some they say uh, Omar al Khattab. Uh, he uh, he he exposed his anus. Imagine, yeah, imagine the leader of the army. The leader of the army. He was fighting with one of the companions of Muhammad. Hmm. When he almost killed him. Uh, okay. He took off his panty. He turned his ass, he turned his ass to the one who's attacking him. When he was fighting with Ali, he bent over, he took his panty and he exposed his anus. So Ali, he covered his eyes and he turned back. Was that like a, like a sword fight or is it like fist fight? Yeah, they are fighting. Yeah, they are fighting by sword. But look, 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 look at the Kuwaiti. This is the one who made you a Muslim. The one who made you a Muslim, the one who occupied your country. He exposed his ass to protect himself from being killed. Uh, that's really weird. Now, this is not weird. This guy is a he is his name is Umar ibn al-As. You know what does that mean, al-As? Which means yeah, he's, yeah, he's a son of a whore. <laughs> uh, this is who they are. They are a bunch of gang and filthy and, and, and trashy. And they came to your land and they forced you into a new religion and they forced you to speak Arabic. In the time of the Hakim of uh, Amr Allah al Fatimi, uh, not only when Amr al As, this is Amr al As when he came and he fought with Ali, you know, uh, uh, he exposed his anus. But when 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 the Muslim they took over Egypt and we have a guy, his name Al Hakim Amr Allah al Fatimi, the Caliphate, the Dawlat al Fatimiyin. This yeah, guy was a Sikh. He have sex with boys. The one who who run his caravan is boys who they are naked, wear see-through clothes. They are not allowed to wear panties. They have to be naked. Seven years, nobody can eat mulukhiya. You know what mulukhiya, right? Yeah. This is what used to be called mulukhiya. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Be because he died. Because they, when he died, everybody eat it. Imagine, guys. He made that. He said, "This food is my food. Anyone eat it, he should be killed." And he called it Mulukiya, which means uh, like royal. So when the guy he died, the poor Egyptian, desperately because they did not eat this food for many years, they they call it Mulukiya, which means anyone can grab it now. For seven years, nobody can walk with shoes. For seven years, nobody can light a candle at night. Every seven years, he have a new madness. This is Islam. What Islam brought to you? Uh, well, I mean, I was I was born into it, like, uh, like, like, everything I was taught, like, you know, about Islam, like, it used to give me peace before, but like, now I just don't really take it seriously. Like, I just, uh, I don't even pray, but like, I used to pray before. Um, well, my friend, like, I, 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 I advise you to denounce Muhammad and to leave this cult immediately. You don't fit there. This is a cult. This is a very bad, disgusting cult. <clears throat> I don't know. Like maybe I can just reject the hadith and like obey the Quran. The Quran like, is a, is a, is more crazy. The Quran is more crazy. What, what the Quran is better? <laughs> the Quran is more sick. What are you talking about? <laughs> like what, what we're talking about in the Quran is sick. Everything. Well, like what, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about ethic? You want to talk about the fairy tale stories? What do you want to talk about? I mean, there there were like some things that made me doubt a bit, like uh, the story of Khidr, the killing of Khidr, the boy, when mm. he was killed by. Uh, what about this what about the device. flying what about the flying carpet of Suleiman? You like it? Flying carpet? Yeah, in the Quran. You don't know? I never heard of it. Where where's that? No. What do you mean you don't know? Come on, you are you speak Arabic, so you should be able to read easy chapter twenty one. Go to chapter twenty one, read the whole chapter. So they might know about the, the, the flying uh, carpet. 
He used to order the jinn to build build him uh, his uh, castle or something. And the the ants, uh, he like the the talking ants. I remember those, but like I don't remember. Which is stupid because Fine. ants don't talk. Uh, ants speak by the communication. The communication is by uh, chemical and by vibration. And the Quran says he was amused with her speech. You know, he heard her speaking. That's his false. This is a this is a story taken from the legions of the Jews. The Jews they have a stories they tell to their kids. Muhammad he lived between the Jews. He took their story. He made the Quran. Stupid Muhammad. Uh, and, he, and here in the front of us we see that in the Quran, you know, uh, make it clear that uh, uh, Suleiman he have a he have a ring. You heard of the ring of Suleiman, right? Yeah, hmm. I think so. Do you know how Suleiman lost his ring? Uh no. Well, what happened? He went to the bathroom, you know, and this is why I don't go to the bathroom no more. So he went to the bathroom. And because this is a ring given to him uh, from Allah, so it's a holy, uh, holy ring, you know. Uh, yeah. So he have to give his ring each time he wanna go uh, to the bathroom to his wife. His wife, her name is Jarada. Uh, yeah. So Shaitan, uh, uh, he come to his wife when he was in the bathroom and looked like this time he he stay long for maybe ten hours. So he came to him to her and he told her I am Suleiman because he looked like Suleiman and uh, Because he looked like Suleiman so the wife she gave him the ring and she believed him So by wearing the ring he became the king and then he started having sex with all the wives and Then the wives didn't notice that this is cannot be uh, uh, You know uh, It cannot be him because he, he he's very good in bed not like the previous husband <laughs> So, you know, this is what happened. He took the ring he wore it. He became the king. And then one day, uh, the, the wives, they complained to the elders in the kingdom, like the ministers, that this, uh, our husband, Suleiman, is acting weird. They said, why? They said, because his penis never sleep. He's always having so good in sex, and he never, never have enough. And we suspect that this is not him, something like a magic happening. So the shaitan, he heard this, that he is discovered, or let us say he's exposed. So he decided to run away and he threw the ring in the ocean. And Suleiman at that time, because he lost his kingdom, he started to work as a porter in the port. So one day he was, he saw, uh, 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 he saw a guy who bought fish and he told him, how much you, 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 you pay me if I carry the fish for you to your house? The guy, he told him, I will give you two fish. And Suleiman, he carried a fish. You can, by the way, you can search. You know, I'm not making things up. You can search. You can read it yourself. Uh, and Suleiman, he carried the uh, carried the fish for this guy. When they arrived home, the guy he gave him the fish. He said, "Okay, this is your payment." Suleiman, he took the fish. He went home. He opened one of them to eat it because he want to clean it to eat it. And when he opened it, he found the ring inside the fish. <laughs> and now he became a king again. <laughs> and then after that. Uh, Suleiman, uh, uh, after he got his ring, he sent his army with the genies to capture this shaitan who took his kingdom from him. And they found him. He, you know, he chained himself in a in a what they call it, uh, lead. You know, lead. It's very heavy, right? He chained himself in lead. So uh, yeah. anyway, at the end of the day, the, the shayateen of Suleiman who worked for him, they were able to arrest him, bring him to Suleiman. Suleiman, he dig inside a big, big, big rock, and he put him inside the rock, and until now he is there. And now it's time. Now it's time to go to bed. <laughs> uh, is this story found in the Tafsir of oh, yeah. the verses? Yeah. Uh. It's <laughs> Uh, it's really weird. I'll, I'll have to look this up. Yeah. Well, my friend, I advise you to to denounce Islam. Feel free. You know, you can call me anytime, and you can see yourself that this is very. Really, this is you know, this Islam is nothing but a, 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 a um, you know, a, a collection of stupid stories, and there is nothing you know, nothing there is real. Muhammad he copies stories from people around him. He, some stories from the Jews, some stories from the Christians, some story from the Sabian, Salman al-Farisi, the Persian, 
and etc and he put them in a book and he called it Islam and this is my book I'm a prophet and you believe in me if you don't believe in me I kill you and then he promised you a heaven which is simply uh, full of fictions and sex and madness <laughs> Anyway, look like uh, your your internet is weak. Anyway, guys, I I think we have enough for today. Did you have a good time? Don't forget, please, to subscribe, so you can be with us each time we go on air. And again, if you are if you have an Instagram, don't forget to uh, follow me in Instagram because I I post always before I go on air on Instagram that I am going to be on air. Uh, just search for Arabian Prophet. Actually, if you if you exit to my page in YouTube, you will find in the corner of the banner you will see my Instagram. You click click and you will see you will see it. Uh, subscribe, tell your friends about what we do here, and uh, invite the Muslims. As you see, there is many Muslims are leaving this cult as soon they understand Muslims. You know, many people maybe they want you to hate the Muslim to hate the Muslims. I don't want you to hate anybody. There is many. They have very, very uh, sad heart, and they are aggressive and they are violent. But there is many Muslims. They are poor people. They do not know what Islam is about. Like the gentleman who was speaking to us, I believe truly that this person is a nice person and he is not a bad person. But he's born of a Muslim family. What his fault? You know, he did not choose. He did not have <clears throat> the choice to choose. But I hope by listening to us, by learning, they will learn the truth and the truth will set them free. Some people might think that it's very hard to make somebody leave his faith. This is not true. A lot of Muslims are leaving Islam because what we are shown is very powerful. Islam is very easy to defeat. It's the most stupid religion ever. The most silly, the most disgusting, the most stupid, the most everything most extreme. But in order to fight such a cult, you need to know. And if you do not know, you cannot fight anything. You cannot fight even your, 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 your flu. If you do not know where is the switch of your light in your house, let us say you, you just enter a house, big, beautiful palace. But you do not know where the switch in your, in your palace. To turn the light on, you will stay in dark. As simple as that. Ignorance is our problem. The light is there just go to the switch and switch it as simple as that but you do not know where so it's very important that we know how to turn the switch on and in this program we do have the switch join us and be with us and tell your friends about us so they might learn how we can make the whole world have light so nobody can deceive them nobody can lie to them and everybody will live in light and nobody will die in his ignorance thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you all and i hope the muslims they learn something good today the same as the christians and the rest of the world take care christ is lord islam is false and this is a christian prince was with you and see you soon again bye bye